Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god, little thing. <laughs> We're moving away the things that might actually. <laughs> Alright, you guys keep the water in your mouth, please. One, two. <coughs> Ready? Oh, that felt kind of good. Okay, it's at 20. I told you, bro. Hell yeah. Okay, can I put it up to. Okay. <laughs> I want more. <laughs> ah! Oh, that's kind of nice. Ooh. Oh, it woke me up. Take it off! Take oh. it off! No! This my color. collar! All right, this is my collar! Bed dog! <laughs> ah! I broke my computer screen. I broke my computer. This is my computer now. Okay, we're gonna work on this. We're gonna work on this. I'm gonna work on this. I don't have the anger issue. Distraction? There's no distractions going on here. I don't know what you're talking about. Wait, I got this. I got this. One piece books and she put them under her DJs. Andrea, use your own book. You don't even read them. You have 40 books and you don't read. You don't read. But can we talk about something? Why is it this photo? Why does everybody have a fantastic photo? And this is a screenshot from a random PCL stream when they used to make us wear the little golf shirts that don't even make sense. I'm not even looking at the camera. What is this? What photo do you want? Oh, um, well, I would love the same photo I have on Instagram and Twitter. Wait, did we change? <gasps> we did it! <laughs> yeah! Hell yeah! Hey! Who made me 37, you asshole? So again, for the context, try to read Jen Shahade, uh, Shahadi, Shahadi uh, article from. Uh, ah! Fight. Mouth slip. Okay. I, I slipped. Okay. Oof. It didn't mean to ruin the moment. Scared the shit of me. Yeah, my bad. A question, trap question. Who are strong in this position, bishops or knights? Well, you said it was a trick question, so. Even though it's an open, typically bishops are stronger in open positions. Um, but Dina said it's a trick question, so the answer is night. <laughs> the trap in the trick question was that there was no trap. Wow! Who does this? <laughs> what type of cool game is this? You see me when oh, I'm cats, down baby. and you continue beating me. It looks like 339,000 now in the pot. I'm calling it right now. This is a queen. No right. queens. I'll, I will literally Another tip you $20,000 oh, for the queen. 20 grand. Oh. Even Magic can't do that. And Botez again. Are you kidding me? Top 100 female poker owner. That's it. Did you crack it just now? I really need help. With what? I have been, I'm running late and I've been trying for 10 minutes to put on my shoes. And I have used every muscle. Ask Vila. No, no, he doesn't. I need you to pull my. Please, I'm so. Not late. during this game. No, no, I need. I need I'm not you. during this game. All you have to do is pull. 
Vila's right there. Vila doesn't have the muscle it yes, takes. Yes, he does. Please, I can't put on my Andrea, shoes. Andrea, Vila can help you put on your shoes. I No, you don't understand. Andrea. You know what? This is why we- Andrea, I blocked her! Get out of here! <laughs> Andrea! Welcome back to the round in today's round we're gonna see lots of exciting games it is round nine of sunway fermentera siege of spain i'm your host women's grandmaster dina belenka and alongside me is no one but alexander banzea international master international arbiter international coach and international Mental preparator. Alex, how are you doing today? I have missed yesterday's action. Oh man. Uh, you have to really uh, get to check uh, the game between uh, Alex and uh, the fa famous Norwegian chess journalist. That was uh, quite a shocker. I haven't seen something like that happening in like maybe 10 years for now. But yeah. That, uh, was, a yeah. Shock. that was a big, 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 mm -hmm. big shock. Uh, yeah, we are back. And uh, okay, can we look at the boards? We can discuss about that already. So we have uh, A7 Benko by Alexandra Botes. So. Uh, that is one of the typical tricks when uh, black delays taking. You can actually go a7 yourself and force it. While um, in Andrea's game, this is a position she already had two rounds ago. And she played the better move this time, bishop g5, if you remember Dina. She played the c4 in the previous game. Right. So, uh, yeah, okay, exciting, uh, exciting stuff. Uh, it's still a question whether uh, now Jules will play uh, bishop a6 or bishop g7, because white is intending to go uh, e4, and you want to be able to sort of mess up king's position a little bit i guess or more of more like trading a pair of pieces as black here big uh, choice for uh jules gambit bishop a6 uh, or bishop g7 and uh, okay it's good that andrea's opponent is not blitzing out moves because uh yeah this is something new that uh we have prepared but also I'm expecting him to be aware of this since it's the best computer move. So, yeah, maybe he's just trying to recall his prep, but I'm feeling pretty confident about uh, Andrea's position. She's facing a relatively strong uh, junior from Germany. I want to let everybody know that uh, this 16... Uh, is he 16? Damn it. Who knows I anymore? I story yesterday uh, about this guy, and from that story, the narrative was that he was 17. And chat, everybody, Andrea will have yeah, the story Yeah, he's, uh, he's like 16 or 17, and uh, he defeated uh, Grandmaster in the first round, basically. Mm. So, he already defeated the GM, and uh, let's see if Andrea can slow him down. He had a decent tournament so far. He's gaining ELO. You guys may be tempted to think that if he got himself into a position where he's playing Andrea, he's probably having the worst tournament of his life. But no, he's actually gaining points. This is just a very tough uh, event. Uh, he doesn't have that many points because he played against higher rated oppositions and made, uh, made a few draws. And, uh, okay, it's nice that Alexandra has the option of playing e4. And notice that you get more of like a typical uh, Benko where uh, you don't even get the bishop trade as black. So, sure, it's like there is some compensation, but 
my general my general feeling is that uh, it's easier to play up upon than uh, down upon. Right. So happy with Alexandra's uh, opening. Strange decision by uh, Jules to play this way, but uh, okay. I mean. Uh, yeah, didn't her mama tell her that against Alexandra you need to play normal opening and Alexandra will undevelop, undevelop her own self? <laughs> no, she only plays, uh, she only plays Benko, it's just that, uh, yeah, I, I don't understand because sometimes she deviates with these early move orders while, uh, yeah, normally she's getting that Bishop a6, bishop takes f1 trade, but doesn't seem to be the case now. Uh, so, yeah, okay. So far, both positions are looking pretty good. Uh, 10 moves in, almost, in both sides. And we have the, the white pieces. So, oh, we also have uh, Papa Botes in the chat. So he's our uh, data specialist, confirming that Andrea's opponent is going to be 17 years old soon. Yeah, Cha, Andrea will have a story. Apparently she met her opponent already before. Wait, how do you know? When did you I had a quick find catch out up. about this story? I had a quick catch up and a story in all detail yesterday, so... Um... So guys, but stay tuned. Apparently there is some intrigue between these two. Okay. I am dying to know. What could it be? Uh, uh you know, it's Andrea style story. It's not it's something that you're dying to know and once you know it you regret knowing it. Wait, did he <laughs> catch her preparing <laughs> or what? No, no, no. It's not chess related. <laughs> It's so it's a social story. Oh, I see. Okay. It's a social mm. story, yeah. All right. Got some moves. Nine F three by Alex. Yeah, I don't think you're too worried about Bishop G four pin. Although uh, it could have been clever to just go Bishop B five check and be annoying. Like if you get that Bishop trade, I think it cannot hurt really. And, uh, yeah, they always say this, there's a bit of compensation in the bank, but I'm not such a big believer. Neither am I'm I. the kind of guy that says, okay, show me the compensation. I don't believe it. <laughs> That's why, uh, okay. I don't play a uh, bank or gambit myself, but I only do it sometimes in the King's Indian if, um, uh, we get an improved version of the Banco. Because now White has all kinds of options. So yeah, expecting Alex to play maybe now. Even Bishop C4 or Bishop E2. Uh, Bishop E2 is safer. But the benefit of Bishop C4 could be that you're trying to discourage Black from ever breaking with E6. Which could be a way to try and activate. Okay, Bishop E2, safe move. That's fine. Also, maybe keeping ideas to go like knight d2, knight c4 in the future. Uh, I quite like this. And okay, Dina, do you think on bishop g4, are we gonna see knight d2? Because this is very interesting whether you allow a bishop trade for knight or not. Well, tell us, Alex, what's wrong with allowing bishop trade? No, I uh, I, I don't know. I, I was genuinely asking. Oh, we don't know. <laughs> Yes, no, I, okay, I don't know because uh, the way Jules uh, played this is not uh, the most uh, common, so uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think with my own head, which is really good, but uh, hey, that is kind of what I signed up for with the commentary. <laughs> yeah. I'll try uh, E6. Yeah, E6 and then probably even Castle. I don't think I have to really take, although taking is also fine. Yeah, 
I mean, I don't know. You're still full. Okay, on. Jules didn't play uh, Bishop G4. Just played Knight BD7. It's uh, not clear. What are you going to do with that? I guess she'll still go for uh, Bishop A6. It's just that uh, she kind of lost uh, tempo. They're playing pretty fast. Okay. Now I would really be expecting, uh, okay, can we go back to life position at Alexandra? Yeah, now I think the only way to develop as black is really going bishop a6 next, but I don't think you're necessarily got an improved version as black. I think white is a little bit ahead out of these trades because castling, uh, saves us some time because in the main line maybe we can actually show this for uh, the stream how this normally happens Tina so if you can go back to move uh, <laughs> like five uh yeah the most common move for black on move five is to go bishop takes on a6 Yeah, pawn takes and then bishop takes. And the line goes knight c3, d6, e4, g, uh, I mean, after e4, the point was to take on f1. We take with a king. And then it looks like white's king is a little bit misplaced. Uh -huh. But it's actually just fine because, okay, the line normally goes g6, uh, knight f3, bishop g7, g3, castle, king g2. Interesting. Yeah, this is kind of the starting position. Then knight bd7 and best move for white is a4. So we have something similar. It's just that uh, Alexandra got to castle in the actual game. Which I think can, yeah, it definitely cannot be worse than that. I think if we give Alessandra an extra <clears> pawn, <throat> if we make her develop her pieces and we make her castle, I think you can resign now. I think Jules Gambit chose a completely wrong strategy against Alessandra. <laughs> no, she's just playing she's, her repertoire. No, she decided to reinvent the wheel instead of just playing like a good solid position and let alexandra tilt her own self but if you start oh. giving her some really winning chances then yeah i think alexandra never in this tournament alexandra had such a great position after the opening what do you think well yeah it's typical so far i wouldn't be very excited because you know you look at this bank oh it always starts from plus one but uh it kind of depends on the next like five moves uh, pretty much because yeah you want to go a4 queen c2 and then uh some knight b5 potentially bishop d2 rook a3 ideas and if white manages to let's say even get the b4 push at some point then you have a clean uh, pawn on the a file Something that it's critical uh, for these positions is that, uh, okay, it's kind of counterintuitive, but black, despite being down a pawn, would the love to queen trade in this structure. Because it just kind of makes their uh, compensation with the open files um, uh, somehow better. Uh, because as white, uh, quite often times what may happen is... Uh, you stabilize, you get an extra pawn on the queen side. Black has all the pieces over the queen side uh, defending so you don't push. And then you can uh, sort of switch towards also maybe breaking with e5. And the presence of the queens uh, really helps white because uh, once the e5 break happens, uh, you can actually uh, uh, yeah, play for an attack too. Right. Uh, now I was saying e5 for white, uh, we can play for that at some point. It's okay, more abstract right now, I know. But there is one maneuver, maybe I can try to show it. Uh -huh. So like, let's say uh, on the position that you have now, uh, let's say black goes bishop a6 with take. Okay. Rook takes. Yeah. 
queen c2, say queen b6. Yeah, a4. Okay, we could have also started a4, but yeah. And uh, after a4, uh, next move could be something like bishop d2. And I wanted to show this idea that uh, we can play for uh, rook f b1 and then knight b5, sometimes even uh, knight a3, knight c4. And once you get that uh, knight maneuver, you can perhaps go bishop c3 and then prepare e5 push. That's... Uh, did you say knight d2 and knight c4? So knight, knight b5, knight a3. No, 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 knight, uh, that knight is okay on f3. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you sure the knight is okay? I would prefer this one all wrong. So uh, I get it, but e this way you get both knights to push for e5. Right. And then the bishop could go to c3 and uh, yeah. And then you can like switch the rook placement back to e1. And it's kind of crashing. Uh, yeah, I was looking at this. These positions. Um, with the computer, it's very easy. <laughs> like, white just wins. But uh, it's not as simple uh, when, you, when you play this. Uh, but, uh, okay. I mean, so far, Alexandra has more time than uh, what she started with. So this is good. And also, Andrea's opponent seems to be in deep thinking after the best move. Huh. Interesting. Wow. Is that true that Andrea's opponent is just nerds commentator? Uh, sorry, uh, I didn't uh, fully get that. So commentator on what? On chess nerds OTB tournaments. Oh. Hmm. I don't know. Andrea's clock but... is frozen, not by me, Chad, by um, by the organizers. Oh, actually, never mind. I refreshed. Yeah, Andre is so well prepared. Alex, give me a second. I'll just switch off the conditioner. Sure. Big moment at uh, Andrea because uh, perhaps one of the easiest ways for her opponent to not get in trouble is the strange queen c7 move. But that allows double pawns. So, uh, yeah, also maybe we can uh, go to live board in Alex's game and uh, I can show you some ideas for Andrea. You have ideas to show me. Okay. Yes. I, so exciting. All right. We are in Andrea's board. Yeah, but can you go to live position in Alex's game? Yes, of course. Yes, sir. Yeah, we kind of deviated a little bit. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay. So, because there is such annoying pain uh, after bishop g5, uh -huh. uh, Andrea's opponent has the option of going queen c7. It's probably one of the safest moves, but yeah. it's very hard to play. So, once you go queen c7, we double the pawns. And then uh, I think something like knight d4 is uh, what uh, we discussed. I don't know what uh, Andrea, yeah. Queen c7. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> yes, queen c7 takes, takes, and knight d4. Oh, I just realized, oh my god, you said it and it didn't occur to me. I thought you were talking about Alexandra, I just realized. Chad, do you remember? Andrea had this already against the guy who she beat, the Italian tourist. Yeah, 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 exactly. And she didn't remember, <laughs> but now you improved her prep. Okay. You improved her Bit prep. Of a... and yeah, I remembers. basically reminded her 
yeah. the key move. So now she can do what we already discussed 10 times before. <laughs> wow, Alexandra has a great position. Rook A8, kind of losing time. Not clear what that move does. She's like plus two out of the opening. That's good news for Alexandra. She has to play something simple like A4 or Queen C2. Yeah, so uh, a good point. Uh, now uh, you got it. So, okay, Alex, A4, best move. She's doing well. And okay, when you play Rook A7, as black, it's normally a hint that you're not gonna go bishop a6 anymore, but this is very strange because what are you gonna do with that light square bishop? Sorry guys for being a little bit chaotic, maybe with the explanation, but uh, we get some shocking developments in Alexandra's game, so I cannot act like, you know, this ain't happening. We have to discuss about it first. Yeah, what do you think, Dina? You think black is gonna go bishop a6 anymore in that bank, or you just uh, end up fianchietto on b7 and play for e6? I think that... Wait, why are you screaming? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just wanted to make sure that everybody hears me. Wanted to make sure that everybody hears me. Oh, louder. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I think that Alexandra has a great position. Great position. I love it. Okay, Dina, you can talk normally. You probably woke up a few families with that scream. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, love, I love the position. I love the position. I think it's great. I think it's great. Yeah, but what do you do as black? Yeah, like you play rook a7, rook a8, then it's clear you're not gonna play bishop a6 anymore. So it means you play bishop b7 and then e6, but that's like super weakening. I don't see how you break with e6 without losing on the spot. That's true. No, I mean, what do I think about black's position? I already told you guys that I think Jules Gambit chose a sh wrong strategy. And if Alex is going to tell me, but that's her opening repertoire, I'm going to reply, well, she better change her opening repertoire before it's too late. What do you mean, before it's too late to what? Well, before she loses any more games. Ah, but maybe she also wins sometimes. You think she wins? Okay, I, I'm going to give you my take on the bank. So, uh, for, let's say, below 2000, I think it's okay if you know it well. It's just that, uh, for me, what's the most annoying thing, if I want to play the banco, is that I need to have separate repertoire on uh, C4, so English opening, and also Knight F3 on the Reti. Right. So... That's annoying. So Benko, okay, maybe refuted. Uh, probably you guys are not at the level to say an opening is refuted, but uh, with good play, it's... Yeah, you're going to be down upon without very obvious compensation. But uh, talking for a classical game, in Blitz, you can do whatever. But uh, yeah, that's what kind of bothers me, because sure, you can Benko sometimes if... Uh, they play d4, but what do you do on uh, d4 or knight f3? You need to learn so many other openings. So, one nice thing about the King's Indian, <laughs> if you know it, <laughs> it works against uh, everything. Like d4, c4, knight f3, you're chilling. Blumenfeld? Ooh. Knight yeah, but G4, why is it so bad? It's uh, it's bad because black assumes you need to trade on E5, but I can play H3, Knight E5, and Knight D2 would be my guess. And you're kind of trapped. Can you check that with the computer, Dina? No. Why not? Knight H3, Knight E5. 
92, yeah. 92. I don't take. I go 92. It's my intuition. F4 incoming. Mm -hmm. Russian school of chess. Correct. Take a center. Control the center. Control the game. Okay. Uh, Alex played queen c2. Uh, generally on knight g4, you want to attack, but queen c2, I guess, uh, perfectly playable. I mean, it's crazy but... that if Alexandra has to do her own moves, and she still is plus two. And she yeah. and Julia has fifteen minutes down. I don't. I don't understand. I think I will need to have a conversation with Jules in this one. I think Jules. Uh, Jules is out of control. Someone needs to put. Sh tell her the truth about herself. And her own you think? Openings. Yes, I think so. I'm. I'm pissed. I was. I came here to see the fight, not the slaughtering of a of a mice. Okay. Perhaps more chess instead of. GM speed dating would help her. <laughs> and well, I agree with that, Alex. That was a shot, and that was a fire into my sh into my house. But I agree with that. <laughs> okay, Alex took man. She's like doing so well here, and she has more than uh, what she started with on the clock. <laughs> right. And crazy that Andrea's opponent is still thinking. And also something maybe not so important, but just bothers me. Why is it constantly showing? Oh, never mind. I refreshed. It's not. Yeah. Forget about that. Okay. It was showing that Andrea lost, <laughs> and oh, it was yeah, triggering I me. That in the <laughs> as well. No, I refreshed and it's gone. I had that in the beginning as well. Guys, yeah. there's a difference between me talking loud and me talking not loud. Okay, so it all comes down to that. How loud or not loud I talk. Sometimes I talk quietly. And sometimes I'm so excited, so excited that I just want to scream. You never know. You never know what dinner you're going to get today. Well, it all depends <laughs> on my energy, actually. I'm going to swap mm -hmm. the mic, but I guarantee you nothing will change. Yeah. These people, mm -hmm. how do they even dare suggesting that my mic is a problem? Okay, yeah. Alexandra has a good position. I'm not sure whether you need to go F4. It's like a move that's not gonna hurt, but... Right. Yeah. The thing with f4, maybe it allows some knight g4. What did she do? She played... Uh... She played knight b5, which is a great move, apparently. Okay, it's part of the plan. It's not the best, but like... Not bad either. I think she's preparing rook a3. Yeah, that's what she has in mind. <laughs> she plays so fast. Can she please slow down? <laughs> Why is she so fast? Jules or Alex? Alex. Jules is playing normal. Alex is just... Uh, this is not theory anymore, Alex. Do you realize that? <laughs> Do you think knight b5 is with your genius idea of knight a3 and knight c4? No, 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 no. It's just a typical move here for... Um, you do knight b5, rook a3, and you make sure there are no tricks on the files. So, yeah, you do rook a3, and then you do, like, bishop d2, some b4. That's usually the way to get that past a pawn lonely. Got it. No, that knight a3, okay. It's uh, it was more of like a fun fact. I don't think it will happen very often. But wow, it's crazy that uh, Andrea's opponent is so uncomfortable after Bishop G5, which is well, it only yeah. proves how genius of a 
of a coach you are. How no, I uh, we can maybe maybe say that in like five moves from now. It depends. <laughs> yeah, and this is the way to go because this guy he thought he thought he had a chance, and now Andre needs to destroy him both mentally and on the boards. Basically, guys, long story short, if you watched Andrea's video of how she played the guy for a phone number, remember? Uh, back in, I think it was in Charlotte. Wait, which, which one? It was a, she always it plays was guys a, for phone the numbers. Coffee cha the coffee chess guy. It was not I don't Noah. know anymore. No, this Noah from <laughs> the coffee chess. Oh, Noah, I see. Yeah. Yes. So, um... You guys gotta check that out. So that guy thought he had a real chance. And it's kind of the same story with this guy. He thinks he had a chance. So now Andrea needs to destroy him mentally. And that's why Andrea is way off the board. First of all, she has a genius prep and her opponent is sneaking. But also, her coach insisted on her taking walks. So now Andrea shows more confidence. Oops. And so does Alexandra. Showing more confidence. Confidence stepping up and uh, going away around, and uh, that's the way to go. Just we discussed it so many times. Mental, yeah, you need to mentally destroy them. No chance, no chance, not off nor on the board. Okay, but uh, you mentioned that Andrea's opponent thought he has a chance. A chance to what? A chance to what? Yes. To get to get to get to get something. To win the game? No, <laughs> Alex. Come on. You're an I am. Think. No, I'm it, sorry. That's something that I cannot uh, comprehend. A chance I'm just, uh, to, win, uh, to win Andrea, yeah. I'm just trying to understand whether he's thinking to play knight C D seven or H six here. Sorry. My mind uh cannot uh comprehend other ideas beyond that. What do you think? I think he's gonna go knight cd7 because he's annoyed with the pin. Yeah. Okay, what are you saying, chatters? Why is he thinking so long? Because, up, oh, he just moved. He moved back. I told you, look, I'm in his brain, knight cd7, and Andrea knows that she has to go c4, and she has a good position. What a passive move. Oh, great. Yeah, I he told you, because to he's, uh, because he's, like, so slow, it's clear that he's afraid, so he went back, and now he just do c4. I it told worked. her Andrea this. Yeah. Chat, it worked, and Andrea with a hat, she wanted to destroy, oh my god, this is all against her opponent, I know that. Oh my god, I know that. And Wait, she's she back with the McDonald's hat. Look at her. Yeah. Is, did they get a new sponsorship? It's the bull hat. You think it's a Andro Android oh. uh, McDonald's hat? What am I oh, saying? Could be. It's kind of like a 50 50. I think it's a <laughs> eat fresh. Yeah, and she's nodding Ooh. her head. She knows. Come on. Yeah. Whoa, C4 on the board, and we got another prep move. Let's go. Okay, okay. I mean, she has easy position. It's hard to mess things up. You take one D5, and it's nice. And now you stand up and walk away, Andrea. You stand up and walk away. Let her cook. Yeah, okay, I'm not super excited about this because uh, we had better attacking lines. Uh, this one is just more like we get a safe uh, game kind of thing, which is right. good against the 2100 that uh, won against the Grandmaster this tournament. And we got the raid from Alessia! Alessia, that welcome! Is How very was kind. your stream? Welcome, That's dear. very kind. Welcome, love. How do, How do you say thank you in Italian? Um, Come on, Dina. Aguri. You're the you're the polyglot here. Aguri, Aguri. Senorita. Yes. Wait, what? No, it's grazie. <laughs> you tricked me. Grazie mille. <laughs> yes. Senorita. I got I got bamboozled. Hope I didn't say anything stupid. <laughs> Aguri. <laughs> <sighs> Bagnia, treni, Bagnia. 
I see. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alessia. Alessia is coming to US, guys. So everybody's gonna see her. She's gonna make a tour in the countries. She's gonna visit the girls and she's also gonna visit me. And we're gonna have lots of fun. I cannot wait, Alessia. I'm so looking forward. I miss you, girl. Um Will you also study some chess? Mm. For this, Alex, you need to come to US. No, no, no. I, I, I saw you have a lot of books there uh, in your room that are waiting to be opened. <laughs> right. Yeah, they will be waiting for Alessia to open them and then to close them. Hmm. Right. Oh, I, I study, uh... I read books just like my students read books, if that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. No, I see. So basically, the main use of a book is as a <laughs> fancy mouse pad. <laughs> yeah, as you, no, the main use of a book is that you think one day you will read it. I see. Yeah. Oh, all right, we got moves from Jules Gambit. Also, earlier on, we had Papa Botas in the chat saying that the reason Alexandra plays so fast is that she has played lots of bancos before. Do we believe to conspiracy theorists, Alex? Lies and conspiracy I mean, theories. Um, she's been a chess player her whole life, so the Baker Gambit uh, was more expected than the Blumenfeld. Uh, Blumenfeld also not so bad. It's just that uh, it's not so universal. It's more of a niche thing, and it works via D3, Knight F3 move order when uh, you don't allow Nimzo. But, uh, yeah, okay, Alexandra normally had a lot of Fianchetto Bancos, so this is, I'd say, somewhat new for her. Okay, she played Bishop D2 instantly, <laughs> good move, plus two. <laughs> wow. Bishop D2 going to C3? Man, wow. this is like such a professional handling of the Banco. Look at her, and she has... More time than what she started with. Right. And Andrea, Andrea is also having extra 30 minutes from prep. Man, this is almost unreal. It is totally I don't believe unreal. that this is going so well. I was totally actually unreal. kind of terrified that uh, Andrea's opponent could go for the Grunfeld, even though he never had Grunfeld games. I was afraid that uh you know andrea struggled a little bit against the grunfeld so many people try to repeat that but okay maybe there are so many juicy spots in andrea's jubava london that <laughs> it's hard to choose one he went for this one but this one we already managed to cover so um uh, pretty nice okay so andrea has won this position that was much worse from her Let's see how she'll do with the improved version. Certainly, she'll do better now. That would be logical, but okay, her opponent is also... This guy is sort of a professional junior. With black, he plays Karo Khan. He's more of a solid player. He had a few Dutch games, but I wasn't really expecting Dutch, so... Yeah, I didn't even go over the Dutch with her because... I feel like she's pretty comfortable there. Mm. Oh my god, chat is right. Alex, I know you hate these moments of embarrassments, but it's about time. It's about time, chat. Okay, he took. Sorry. Okay, queen c7. Alex, we're clapping. I Why see. Why are we clapping? Because <laughs> it's plus two? <laughs> because Alexander finished the development. Oh, I thought you were clapping because she finally went oh. at under one hour and 30. That oh was a performance. God. Oh my 
my god, so much improvement. She Move hustled. 16. She, she finally spent that. some time to think. And she is one minute, one hour 30 on the clock. Am I dreaming? That's the right way. She developed. Guys, we're she has very, this game. very obvious plan. Now, bishop c3, f4, takes on g7, queen c3, and then choose between b4 or uh, e5. Okay, uh, about Andrea, I'm not super thrilled about the developments in this game, even though it's very <laughs> prep still. Very much prep. She has to go bishop somewhere. I think bishop anywhere is fine. Uh, to be honest, this one, uh, I'm also not aware what to do if I was uh, having Andrea's position, but... Bishop b3, bishop e2, bishop d3 even. Anything uh, should work. Uh, Chad, do you know what Alex is talking about? Yeah, so basically bishop on c4 is hanging and we need to go somewhere. Queen e2, right? Okay, queen e2, fine too. Okay. I mean, it can be... It can be a bad move. Okay. Maybe unnecessarily allowing knight e4 with some knight c3. Uh... Yeah, not a huge fan of that. Queen e2 played pretty fast, so... I'm not a huge fan of Queen e2, just because you're leaving with that uh, bishop Hanging? That's that needs uh, protection. Queen e2, it's kind of a move that uh, generally your pieces stay hanging. The problem that yeah, is still... that bishop everywhere gets under the knight. Yeah, okay, so this position you don't really play uh, for an advantage, you play more to... For plans? To keep it even. No, to, to plans, tight. just to... Yeah, this one you're basically hoping for a draw as white, because... The prep uh, didn't go the ideal way. No, I mean, we're one hour, f one freaking 32 hour on the clock. I think the prep went more than ideal. No, but I mean, just the kind of position you have, uh, there were way more dangerous, uh, tempting uh, lines that Black could have entered. And he spent half an hour and he went for the most solid reply, which is... Uh, right. Yeah. It's not gonna be very easy to play, but okay. It's uh, definitely playable. Maybe for once in a while, it's time to talk more about uh, Alexandra's game <laughs> this round. Right. I have a feeling. Okay, Alexandra. Let's leave you alone. Let's leave you alone, Andrea. Man, I've never seen Alexandra having plus two chat. I've never seen Alexandra having plus two in the opening in one hour thirty finish the development. I think I think we're dreaming. I think we're in a dream world. I, I don't just don't believe my eyes. Also, just saying that if she wins uh this and the next game, she's probably Gaining yellow. <laughs> what? Yeah, so she's like minus 15 now. And wait. Okay. That's Still crazy. Wins. Oh, yeah, because yesterday she caught a big fish. Yes. She caught a big fish yesterday, chat. That's why. Hmm. Okay, so from the way Andrea's opponent has played, uh, it makes me believe that he's gonna go for b6 and simple chess, although 94 is also pretty tempting for him. Right. I hope he goes like b6 and then uh, 
Okay, after b6, normally a4, a5 would be an idea. I'm just not a huge fan of this queen e2 move because we live with that hanging bishop on c4. So I don't like having my pieces hanging for no reason. Okay, I, asked, I asked David yeah? when he was with me, how do they say that? And then he said, um, because I was trying to like hanging pieces fall. And this, he said, Chad, do you remember? It was something like DPO. Uh, yes, LPDO. LPP. No, LPDO. Loose pieces drop off. LPDO. Yes. LPDO. Yes. Loose pieces drop off. Yeah, that's an important concept for everybody. LPDO, yeah. thank you, chat. You always take notes. I count on you. I never. <laughs> I always. Although that sounds more like a disease than a this concept. Well, it is a disease <laughs> Wait, for those I got, pieces. It's like they're. I got LPDO, man. I got LPDO. That's damn. Should have been more careful. <laughs> uh, okay, B six. So. Played b6. Yeah. This is... Uh, this is not really so great for Andrea. I'm not a fan of this position. Also because her opponent is a Karo Khan player. This is... Dream uh, risk-free position for... Uh, for Karo Khan. But... Uh, Still have the bishop pair if you manage to get in a4, a5, use that b6 pawn as a hook. You can easily liquidate and uh, make a draw. It will be close. I think white has good chances to be safe. But yeah, not particularly thrilled about the outcome. Maybe who knows. It could have been better to try uh, four knight b5 in this game, but it's important as a Jabava London player to understand these e3 structures because if black is sneaky with the move order, he can force you into it. While okay, they need to allow uh, French transposition also. Uh, maybe we can show what I mean, Dina. If you start right away with the moves, I can explain maybe sure. a line that Andrea could have Guide come for. Me. So if you go to move four in Andrea's game. Okay. Um, yeah, so move four. She played uh, E3. And instead of that, there is bigger choice. You can play knight B5. This is what Alexandra faced in the first round, if you remember. Yeah. Chibaba. Yeah, instead of E3, instead of E3, you can play knight B5, yeah? Mm -hmm. So there is no more bishop pin. And knight A6, E3, this is also something that maybe we could play in the future. I don't know. <laughs> Did you never Cannot play reveal it? the press. Uh, so I play this uh, hundreds of times. It's just Did that. Did Andrea uh, never play this? So she played it a bit, but I thought uh, it's actually more clever to do it this way to not go knight b5 and learn e3 first. Because if black is sneaky, mm -hmm. he can maybe go on move uh, two after knight c3. There is the option of uh, going e6 as black. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're comfortable allowing the French defense. And the point is that uh, if bishop f4, you get the pin now. You can play bishop b4 and no more knight b5. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why it's important to know how to play e3 as well. If you want to, let's say, be... Uh, Complete Jobava player. No, no Queen D3. Queen, Queen D3 is, uh, okay, it's what the computer does, but it's leading to weird positions. Is it bad, Alex? 
it's it's best move, but uh, it's impossible to explain that to a beginner. <laughs> yeah, and especially remember the basic of the basic of, of Russian school of chess is not to develop your queen too early. Yeah, uh, this is good. Like Hans Niemann has many games with this, and I think he gives it in his course as well. But yeah, too complicated. And okay, we have some uh, moves. Maybe we can just go to live board at Andrea because she's thinking and go back to Alexandra's game. Uh... Yeah, whenever you've been playing really fast and then the first time your opponent makes something you didn't expect, it's important to take time and think, chat. It is important. So Andrea's thinking now and it's good. And same Alexander. She took a few minutes to think and she played this rook to... How is this position almost plus three? It's crazy. One. <laughs> Jesus. When I see treating your rooks like that, my first instinct is to vomit. Because the rook is on the open file and now it's closed. But there is an idea. You want to push the pawn to b4. And you want to yes. open the file. And we talked about it. It's an x-ray. Remember, chat? It's an x-ray. Mm -hmm. Vomit. So, b4, Vomit. also maybe bishop c3 in the position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bishop c3 and what? No, I'm, I was just saying bishop c3 is an uh, an idea. Bishop c3, then probably something like f4. It's a very pleasant choice for Alexandra because she can be much better no matter what side she plays on. I'm pretty sure she has huge advantage with b4, but also if she goes for central play with bishop c3, f4, that also has to be very good. Right. Up. Yeah, it's very unusual that black doesn't get the bishop trade in the Benko because now uh, you don't even have pressure on the A-file. So normally for the Benko, Dina, if bishops are off instead of rook a, b1, it's quite typical that you bring the other rook to the B-file. Of course. And then you play like rook a3, b4. That is uh, one of the key ways to make progress. But interestingly, it's for some reason, Alex's move is better. Yeah, yeah, it's better because you don't need the uh, rook on a1 because there is no pressure thanks to the stupidly located a6 bishop. Normally, it would have been better to have those exchanges. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. And bishop e3, it's also sneaky because you're threatening b4. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you get in before, that's basically game over. Uh, okay, black can still dodge it, but yeah, okay. I'm not sure I like bishop e3 because if he just moves the queen, maybe you still do something like before. But I would have seen more potential if he plays the bishop on c3. Oh, we have a move. Rook fc8. Okay. Officially plus three. With b3 or bishop e3. Uh, okay, it's nice bishop c3 also for, not bad. Yeah, chat, the greatest thing about this position is that we are not in the risk. We don't risk anything. Like, oh, Alexander bishop e3 has, instantly. WTF. Like, she basically, knows. Basically, any Why move bishop e3? she does is going to be like... Any move she does is going to be advantage. So it's like, even if she wants to destroy her position, she's not going to destroy it. It's just not possible because every single move is, is an advantage. Okay, bishop e3, I'm not sure if it's actually clever or just playing for tricks. Don't jinx it, Dina. Okay, queen a5 though, what are you going to do? Yeah, that's not obvious to me. Maybe repeat. Maybe she just wants to test the waters. So I would have been a bigger fan if, uh, okay, after rook fc8, it's I kind of it's... obvious that black wants c4. So Alexandra had the perfect setup to just take the time and play b3, just not allowing any counterplay. And then, okay, 
try to decide. The computer still doesn't hate her move, but I feel like this is the time where it's actually important for her to slow down and find a plan. I'm not sure I'm, I'm a fan of bishop e3 the more I look at it. Because you kind of yeah. ask the queen to get out of the rook. And it's like long term you're not doing anything, right? You went queen a5, bishop d2. What if I disagree? I don't want to draw. I'm going to go queen to d8. Yeah, so you can go queen d8 and then finally start to think, right? And find b3. Yeah. And then bishop c3, f4, and same kind of position where I'm up a pawn and I also dominate the center. So what are you going to do about it? Right. I wonder if Jules has a coach. I actually don't know. I think it's extremely important this level. I do know as a fact that Jules is actually very passionate about chess, way more passionate than the sisters, for instance, and she really wants to improve. She really, really like put, invests into chess. And um, yeah, that's why I kind of want to suggest her to not to get a lost position out of the opening right away. Um, but I wonder if she prepared with a coach for this game. Um, it was hard to prepare this line because, as I said, uh, Alexandra used to play some Fianchetto Benko. So it's just uh, the Benko in general that, uh, okay, she, if, uh, yeah, she normally wanted, I guess, to get the bishop trade, but also... We can give some credit for Alexandra because not sure if you noticed that pawn to a7 move, Dina. Isn't that weird? We didn't discuss about it. Move six by Alexandra. Mm. Why do you play pawn to a7? Isn't that looking stupid? I mean, you guys had an idea behind it. I have no Maybe. clue what it is. Just get the Could girl be out of the opening. Could be. I don't know. You're laughing. Something is wrong. It's his prep chat. Oh, I'm boy. just saying, A7 is an interesting idea there. So against the modern so Benko. Psychological. I got it. They prepare something psychological to think that they is a novelty, guys. Now I, I'll show you. Novelty. I'll show you one potential danger against what Jules played. So maybe this was her plan. I can show you Dina. So instead of white going a7, maybe uh -huh. I can uh, uh, show you what's usually the plan. So normally black, if they go for the modern line of not taking on a6, okay, instead of a7, most people go knight c3. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can look over that mm -hmm. and try to estimate what was Jules prep. Mm -hmm. So. Knight, uh, knight c3, yeah? Bishop g7? No, 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 just, you, you don't take, that's the point. That's the new way of playing uh, the Benko. So you play oh, bishop g7. With the pawn on a6, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, black doesn't take. Yeah, black doesn't go bishop takes on a6 whatsoever. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, knight c3, bishop g7, e4, castle. Uh-huh. So the point is, uh, black is not afraid of e5. Uh -huh. And if you go knight f3, there is a crazy trap in this variation. Because uh -huh. black goes queen a5. Creating a pin. And asking e5? how do you defend? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. No, queen, queen a5, queen a5, queen a5. No, no, no not okay. e5. Queen a5. How do you defend the e4 pawn, Dina? Okay, let's. I see. It's kind of what we saw in Queen's Indian. Let's say knight d2. Oh, you play knight e2? Okay, I mean, this is show for not chat, part chat. of my this trap. This we saw in Queen's Indian for Alexandra. Knight e4, sacking, and then... Yeah, this oh, is so actually, it happened once between uh, Gelfand and Magnus Carlsen in a rapid game. 
And the point is that Wait, uh, this is winning completely winning for it doesn't work, bro. What have we done? It doesn't work. No, no, no. It's knight takes d5, not oh, knight takes c4. Knight takes d5. Chat, what's yes. the big freaking difference? The difference is that bishop on d3 will be hanging if you block oh. with the bishop. Yeah, this was uh, Gelfand against Carlson like 10 years ago. Oh. Why are you asking? Okay, it's almost like it's kind of the same idea like we saw for Alex in, if you remember, it was she missed against one of the guys. Uh, ooh, and if we go just something clean, then they gonna take. Why it is still better, but if you take, for instance, then it's already kind of equal. Queen a2, ooh, e6 and black equalized. So that's, for example, a cool thing for black. Uh, we, yeah, we got some moves. Alexandra still plays instantly, man. <laughs> I don't like that, but her position is so good in the same time. <laughs> well, this is what yeah. I to told you, brother. Um, it doesn't, here we are safe because even if Alexandra does complete nonsense she's still like like two yeah there are, there, there are like no act no so it's only one pawn dina but uh no plus two it's meaning, uh... yeah, plus two evaluation alex it's like two pawns up uh, i would say it's trickier than that but you can maybe think of that but also don't uh fully believe it because in some positions if you uh, if you don't play accurately, those two pawns uh, disappear. Okay, bishop takes on b5. Good decision by uh, Jules Gambit. And I'm not sure Alexandra looked at this. I wouldn't uh, have allowed this knight g4 idea. Could be trouble on the dark squares. This is uh, not good. Not good at all. Knight g4, it's... Still fine, like bishop d2, and luckily after bishop d4 check king h1, there's nothing happening, like queen. Yeah. Queen to d8, let's say, but I'm just in time to kick you out with h3. But very unnecessary, like this is the position where, as Alexandra, you just need to spend some time, you have full control, extra pawn, just don't allow any nonsense, and slowly convert, but... She likes to play with fire. Okay, she now it's gonna wants... be a big moment whether she'll be afraid of that and will take on b5 with the pawn. I think... Because if she... Yeah. If oh. she takes on b5 with the pawn... I'm not so happy about it. Okay, so she took with the bishop, she's not yeah. afraid. Maybe she just completely blundered knight g4. <laughs> Could also be that. <laughs> pawn would have been bad, chat. You create double pawns and your, your bishop is kind of more passive. If c4 happens, then Bone can even look, get LPDO. Bad things can happen. But uh, yeah, it's move 20 and she <laughs> spent five minutes. Well, listen, <laughs> Alex, I told you she just fast. wants to demoralize her opponent. She knows that she is the queen and her opponent is just a pawn who is dreaming about becoming a queen so she wants to capitalize on that there is a lot of psychology in this she wants to like playing fast is actually also pushing, pushing. okay okay but 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 with this psychology i'd love to have an answer on ig4 move so well it's gonna be this, this <laughs> i don't want to get mated on the dark squares if possible luckily though black it's impossible to bring the queen into the attack otherwise it would have been disaster yeah. It's so funny that the queen has almost no way, has to go all the way to d8, but then h3 kind of closes the party early. One second, I need to translate stoic. Stoic? No, it's you don't need to translate it. A person who can endure plan, pain or hardship without showing their feelings or complaining. A yeah. member of the Asian Philosophical School of Stoicism. But isn't like stoic meaning like disciplined or something? <laughs> no? Uh, 
Mm. Wait. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Because no? I'm laughing if there is a potential suggestion of Dina and discipline nearby. Oh. Yeah. Means stubborn? Hmm. I don't know. All right, chat. Alexandra is putting lots of pressure on her opponent. Not the same can be said about Andrea, sadly. Well, yeah. Andrea still have the clock. Well, I kind of like that she takes a moment to think because it's the first yeah. time after the opening. So it's kind of okay. She's probably... Ooh, hmm. she played Just... a bishop at d2. She's playing fast. You know what? Another option that I have is Alex is done with, with chess. She already wants the tournament to be over, so she decided to play fast. And also, I think Alex learned from yesterday. Yesterday, the reason why she won is because her opponent put himself in the time trouble and uh, threw a winning position. And yeah, Chad, it's, it's a strategy. It is a strategy. I actually messaged him. I messaged the guy, Chad, so that you know. Because you know I'm not... I'm not a... Wait, who, who did you message? I messaged the journalist, Alex's opponent. Oh, okay. I said, Hey, Tarji, sorry for today's game. Also, please don't watch my commentary. It's pretty trash talking. I warned him. You should have easily won this if you had more time at the end game. But I have been in your shoes so many times. I know how it feels. Obviously, no need to fall for the cheap trick on giving the knight away by Alex. Just play b5 and she has no moves. And he replied, Thanks, Dina. Appreciate it. I forgive your trash talk as I guess you guys got some great content out of it. I was going to play b5 and I saw it was winning, but then somehow decided last Lasfina to take the knight was the safer option. It was not. Dot, dot, dot. Damn. Well, I said it in general, in those winning positions, you just want to play confident and fast. Because with time pressure, you can throw any win. So Alex knows that she learned, she finally learned that the key to win a chess game is not is is to play, is not to get into time trouble. Sounds like a nice guy, though. He is. He it's is not that nice he sounds, guy. he is. He's a sweet guy, sweetheart. Okay, Bishop d4 by Jules. So... King H1. At least she managed to get one check. Problem is that computer shows plus three. Right. I thought Dina was about to message something, something went nice. wrong. I did message something nice. I messaged lots of support. Imagine you play against Alexander and then you get a DM from me. Isn't that nice? But I, I, yeah. Okay, somehow Alexandra is able to get a great position without having a clear plan. She's just making moves that are not great, not bad, and she's plus three. Uh, yeah. And she instantly played h3. <laughs> I'm loving this. This is so fun. This is fast. Knight a3 is going to happen. Yeah, because knight f2, the knight is, I mean, looks trapped. I don't see how we win it, but looks trapped. So knight, but okay, knight e3. But okay. You allow this trade. Huh. So at least with this opposite colored bishops, we can't lose, right? Yeah. We just play maybe b3 and then... Slowly transfer our pieces towards the king side, and uh, we can use the concept of two weaknesses after and create threats against the king. And when black defends with all his pieces against the king, we can use the a pawn as a diversion, or how do you say it? Is diversion a word? As a distraction. Wait, distraction. Yeah. It's diversion from. As a as a, as a bait. Minion? Yes. Nice. <laughs> is it in Russian too? 
devotion, no. But I know, oh. I guys, I know actually yeah. that Romanian, among all the languages existing, Romanian is the closest one to Latin that died and is only in the Bible. The Romanian yes. is actually the closest to the Latin. Also, Spanish is uh, a bit similar. Like, yeah, uh... well, Spanish, French, and Portuguese, uh, they are all the like, same Latin group of languages, but they are all further away compared to Romanian. Romanian is the closest, which is crazy because Romanian sounds so like, like it sounds so uh, village. Sorry. But... <laughs> yeah, but we we have also many things from from Russian, and uh, not only like words, but also culture and buildings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When you think of think, Latin, uh... you, you imagine something like, like, you know, Rome and Italy. But in fact, if you think about Latin, Latin, you should just, yeah, basically listen to Romanian. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Alex. Feel free to roast no. Russian as well. No, no, no. There's nothing to roast. Like, uh, we have uh, similar traditions here. So, yeah. yeah. Like our... Uh, Italian, yeah. Our president uh, back in the days in the communism used to borrow a lot of things from yeah, but that's, Russian that's culture. Yeah, but that's only last century, right? Because, like, the languages there, they were, like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like 2,000 years ago, right? When Latin was oh, a yeah. thing. Yeah, I felt like I forgot something. Obviously, I forgot Italian. So in Rome, the former capital of Latin Roman Empire, like the freaking Rome, the freaking Italian is not as close to Latin as Romanian is. I guess that that was my biggest surprise when I found it out. That's impressive, right? Even Italian is so far away from from the origin compared to Romanian. Yeah. Okay. I mean, Alex still playing instantly. What did she do? B3, best move. Jesus. What yeah, is up I with mean, her? we're safe. We're she safe. plays so good and so fast. Bro, <laughs> this is the power of openings. Whenever you get a winning position, it doesn't matter what you do, how you do, and how fast you play. There is like you, you have so much space and so much room. That, yeah, like, whatever. Yeah, she stopped the only C4 idea. That's very important. And next she has a free hand to play Rook B to E1 and then E5. And <coughs> yeah, you almost trapped the knight even. <laughs> I think we have a new Alex. I think Alex reborn. I think this is a Terminator. Ter ter Terminator Alex. Also, I'm... It's sad that Jules didn't play ninety three. I wonder what was going through her mind. It was pretty one sided, like uh, why not ninety three? So you don't have an attack, and then takes B three. Uh, I guess she wanted to keep more pieces on the board just for like sake of compensation, but not to equalize or what. For what? I feel like there's definitely easier play, like more chances for draw. Okay, it's easier, but you 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 you, you have chances for draw. As a Benko player, you're oh, always so you looking think for Jules some is kind of for counterplay. A win. That's what you're... You think Jules okay, has not for a win, but I'm just saying it's not natural for a Benko player to just turn on defensive mode and like really forget about any activity for the rest of the game. Uh, it was... Tricky decision. Okay, and still not clear what activity you'll get by keeping the knight, but that's... <laughs> you don't... I'm not the one that's playing that position to answer it, so... <laughs> yeah. Also, Alex, you sent me a game yesterday, Michael Adams Did you? Konstantin Lupulescu. What was Have that you seen one it? for? It's similar to Alex's game uh, from yesterday. Alex's game from yesterday. Yeah. Uh, in what way? In the end game. Oh, okay. Yeah, Alex sent me a DM with the game, and I was like, "What? What, what did that refer to?" And then I realized it's just something completely lost, and then it gets swindled, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. See, it was true. a bit, a bit similar. <laughs> oh god, it's so similar. Yeah. 
<laughs> and it was Michael Adams we thought. <laughs> yeah. Chad, Man, Michael I, Adams gonna, is such a good player. Those who know, so yeah. we, you know what we're talking about. Yeah. It was this. Yeah, one. if you you can get them, it's just a yeah I'm a gonna link send it that's to YouTube as well. It's this one, and you if you want to yeah. see it. It's just a chess games link. It's not gonna hack your computer. If you've seen uh, yesterday's thriller between uh, Alexandra and uh, her uh, opponent, uh, journalist from uh, Norway, that was uh, <laughs> had a similar end. But uh, okay, we have moves. Knight h5 by Jules. Which uh, can we just play King h2? I guess so. Also, apparently better to do uh, queen d3 or rook f3. Rook f3 is not the move that I would play. I would just do king h2 if I'm having this position in Alexandra game, just to improve uh, king a little bit. I don't think I'll ever get hit on the dark squares, so... Yeah, king h2 is easy decision. Yeah, Andrea still thinking, not a fun position to play. I have to be honest, I was just hoping for something more exciting out of that variation. It's a bit unlucky, because her opponent has a great reaction on the surprise. Uh, people in chat are asking if Alex and Dina have ever played with each other. If by saying Alex, you mean Alex Banze, then yes, literally the yes. first time we met. Uh, we, we, it was on the chess board and we didn't know each other. and rather say no, Alex I, I, I knew you I knew Alex you you didn't, didn't know me know Alex, let's and clarify that me off guard <laughs> and that is like the most like that's like the the most successful video on my channel it's the most watched video on my channel <laughs> so you should check that out it's called undercover master who won yes. but the saddest part is that I took revenge and then I beat the hell out of him like three zero two times <laughs> I don't remember like completely destroyed it's like took all my range and then my mod forgot to make a highlight out of that wad and it got deleted oh, automatically on Twitch. I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe I was drunk. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sadly there is no video, so. <laughs> so I cannot even like, yeah, even cannot show you the range. Surely happened. <laughs> I swear. I <clears throat> Guys, I swear. Yeah, it's like I had another game that I lost like that, like a, like a content that I lost. It was with Vidit, one really cool game. And then I started looking for it and it turned out my mod forgot to make a highlight out of it. That's when I realized I can't trust anyone. I see. No, it's it's bad. Like I, I had some issues with uh, messing up videos in the past too. Like for instance, when I was recording for Chisable once, so I recorded the video that was like an hour long and I realized uh, I was muted. So I had to do it again. <laughs> I did it again and then I realized that the chess pieces were not moving. Oh, God. So I had to repeat the same hour of content for the third time in the same day and be excited while doing it. That was so bad, but got the job done. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, yeah. But the fun fact, it's like for real. I looked at this guy over there, his red t shirt, some like hair like this, you know? And like, I'm like, who the hell is this kid? He must be 1500. It's like one real time, because you know, all this undercover master videos, they're all fake, they're all set up. But this one was real. I really thought the guy was like 1500. And I did not look at the board. I didn't focus. I was only thinking about trash talk about because we were streaming live on Bodas. For me, it was like, you know, one of those moments like, oh my god, oh my god, I'm at Bodas live. I need to say something funny. People need to see me. People need to notice me. It's my time to shine. And so I was always like focused on God and never look at the board until I realized I blew the loss. And then like the guy is like talking about Dania. Like, why is he talking about Dania? Does he know Dania? 
And then like he started taking more and like he knows some theory. And until the moment he started slowly realizing maybe he's not as bad as I think it is. And then after the video he said that he's an I am. And I was in total shock. Total shock. That's the one time ever I got really, really pranked. And I can swear all other undercover master videos are staged, fake, just like this stage, like just like these people. Yeah, it's kind of like this novice Noah and the guy today that they thought they can play for real for Andrea's phone number. <laughs> I see. No, I mean, uh, honestly, you could have figured it out. Like I was moving the pieces like a professional, not like a beginner. I didn't f do like a full act. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, yeah, I noticed that, but I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's funny because you can notice when somebody is a beginner just by the way they uh, handle the pieces. Well, you know, like... <laughs> Alex, I've, I've said it this many times, but for me, the way Alex and Andrea move their pieces is so weird. For me, this is like beginners. <laughs> so sometimes it's uh, like it, it can They be... don't play much over the board. That's why they mainly play online. Yeah. So... I don't know if you could see that, but like if you could notice that. I thought maybe it's an American way of moving pieces. But for me, it's no, weird. It's not. But if you like look at the top players, they have a uh, way better handling of the wooden pieces than, uh, okay, normal masters. If, for instance, I was watching uh, one how moving the pieces, and bro, it's like so smooth. It's like just a different sport. Just the way they capture pieces and they move on the board. Just because. Of the fact that uh, they spent so many hours training over the board, uh, even their piece handling is something special. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, yeah. That's but, true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Someone is asking if that if people in the hustlers knew if that when that day when Alice and Rhea weren't old women in prothesis, that I don't know because they might have actually did a very like professional job on these guys but let's say whenever like an anna comes to the park and or like any other like or me i come to the park and like there was a video that they didn't know who i was that's all fake like they they always recognize and um mm -hmm. yeah no i uh i should go and uh <laughs> record more because nobody knows me so i need to take advantage of that oh absolutely <laughs> Absolutely, no one knows you are the most selling author on Chessable. No, no, no. Did it's, you guys uh... study Alex's Bonze in London? Chabava's London on Chessable? No, I don't have Chabava London yet. I have just a normal one. Oh, Carta um, in London. Yeah. Uh, a few of them, but maybe we'll see some Karo Khan soon by the girls. Although, that's Highly unlikely. The Sicilian has been very successful yesterday. Uh, and Andrea just played e4, which is actually a great move. Okay, sure, position is not ideal, but e4 is hinting towards some activity. I like that she doesn't uh, get passive and, for instance, uh, even a move like bishop d3 next. Yeah. yeah, black needs to, in order to get anything here. I think it's some precise, very precise moves, but overall, I think this is pretty safe. So the thing with Andrea's game, everybody, you're probably wondering, uh, okay, why are we playing this? This doesn't look so amazing and all that. That's the thing with surprise weapons when you play them for the first time and you hope, okay, opponent has like five ways to go wrong and like one way to, yeah, get an easy possession. Uh, it was uh, one of those uh, unlucky scenarios where he had a good reaction. So we'll just see how this game goes and probably, yeah, for the next game, we could deviate. Or if you are one of her future opponents, maybe we don't deviate. You never know. <laughs> so, yeah, E4, good move. And Alexandra also played Bishop C3, which is, yeah, still... She's uh, blitzing out everything. She It's move 26 and she hasn't spent not even 10 minutes and she has best position she ever had this tournament. So, uh, looking uh, looking quite, uh, quite promising. 
Right. What do you think about the candidates, Dina? We had some really big developments yesterday. I actually also wanted to ask you because there has been a lot and lots and lots of action yesterday, which is crazy. Um, yeah, guys. Um, man, obviously I was so happy, so happy for my boy Hikaru. But then I realized, uh, Nepo is winning as well. And I was like, dang. Uh, it wasn't winning. It was a uh, slow, uh, torture. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah. It was a long game, but he managed to win. It's just, um, I don't know. Mm. It, uh, would, it, it would be kind of nice for like the chess ecosystem overall for Hikaru to win and bring more viewers and all yeah. that. But oh my God, that would be Nepo is just too solid. Nepo is just too solid. I'm sorry. I don't think you can compete with Nepo on this one. He just looks too solid. The Russian guy. No, honestly, I, I, okay, few things. First of all, chat, I don't know if you were watching, but first of all, like obviously now Gukesh is behind, which is super cool, but mm, Hikaru and Gukesh actually play each other in the last round. So that's a huge bonus for Nepo because like two of his people behind are like going to lose half a point. Anyway, like one one is gonna drop. Plus, obviously for Hikaru is challenging because he's still playing the big guy. I don't I don't remember who's Nepo yet to play, but I think it's like he's definitely not the one. Then Vidit. Vidit is actually Hikaru's biggest crypto knight because uh, mm -hmm. he stole no one but two points from Hikaru, but beating him. And also, I don't know if he lost both games to Nepo, if he did one and a half, but he obviously gave like one and a half or two points to Hikaru. So basically, they did fucked Hikaru in four points <laughs> or like at least three. He lost both, exactly. Imagine Vidit, it's like what kind of a torture Vidit is to Hikaru. This is like, he literally stole four points from Hikaru. And, uh, yeah. and and then what last thing and I see the most um on Joel's behalf. Mm -hmm. L last thing is that yeah, obviously like I'm I'm obviously rooting for Hikaru because for me he's an inspiration, like a streamer, a streamer who plays professional chess. That being said, like Jan is my com compatriot, so I kind of like I feel bad not rooting for him. But I also feel like Jan tried so hard that he really deserved to win the candidates. And at the end of the day, I think the best scenario would be that Jan and Nepo finish in the first two. Because remember, Ding is an alter space. We don't know if Ding is even gonna like defend the title. So just like two years ago, we're in the exact same situation where we might see like first and second place mattering, not just first, but even like first two for these candidates. Mm -hmm. No, I see. Uh, what? Bishop c4 by Alex? Alex, slow down. Why not bishop c6? Bishop c4, fine too, but yeah. Man, Alex bishop c6 be today. even more annoying. Maybe she took an Adderall. I mean, she always takes an Adderall. Okay, but honestly, she just has very easy moves. Like rook d1, pick up the d4 pawn, and uh, oh, that's man. all she wrote. See, <laughs> As... see, friend Alex, this is the problem. Like, 93, yes, you trade pieces, but at least... Like you trade the right pieces here after knight f6. What Alex did is amaze me because, like, there is no way to avoid bishop trades. And now, when you have to choose between giving away your bishop, dark square bishop, or giving away the uh, like knight against the bishop, it's completely not the same. The worst is that at least, at least she could have taken, but instead, Jules weakening yeah, yeah. her pawn, creating double pawns, and creating two connected pass pawns for Alexander. Yeah. I say the game is over. The game is over, everybody. After after allowing bishop takes d4, pawn takes d4, now this, this thing on d4, it's Alexandra's second breakfast. I mean, lunch. <laughs> yeah, that's a big brunch right there. Uh, lunch. No, uh, yeah, I think she was hoping for some sort of activity, but... 
there is no activity still, and that one is just going to be picked up. Um, so, yeah, great developments. Okay, Andrea, important moment in her game. If she finds bishop d3, she has decent position. If she plays anything else, uh, I'm... Yeah, I think it's... It's going to be a tricky game at Andrea, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, it's just very unlucky. So if Andrea loses this game, I would say it doesn't have to do much with her play. I think it's just um, kind of unlucky that uh, the prep uh, went really sideways, uh, and that guy pretty much fought for thirty minutes and pretty much refuted it over the board. Um, it happens like that sometimes. So, yeah. Man. But still, if she finds bishop d3, I would say uh, the game goes on. Yeah. That would be good. Um, and also, there is a chance she might get uh, another white game tomorrow because she double black, I would say. It would be normal to double uh, white pieces as well, but okay, you never know. So, uh, okay, can Jules create any tricks here? Alexandra just played queen d3, getting ready to snipe that pawn, preparing rook d1 and queen d4. I don't see. Yeah, I don't see a way. And uh... how easy is the conversion? It should be pretty easy. There are basically... The only trick that Jules Gambit can hope for is that, let's say... Okay, let's go over this line, uh, Dina. So let's say knight d7 okay. by black. Um, some rook d1. Oh, and wait, then, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, what move order? I lost you. Yeah, so knight d7 in this position at uh, Alex. Oh, you're talking about that. Andrea yeah. just moved, by the way. Bishop, I think she did it. No. No? It's a knight? Oh, God. Where does the knight go? Okay, chat, uh. we need to talk. This is important. Chat, everybody. This is hugely important. Just one thing. Um, what is this? Quick, chat, and then I'll let you into the Vanzea's hands. What is this? Quick. What is this? It's a barrier. Correct. It's a barrier for the bishop. What What does it indicate? It indicates that bishop mm -hmm. doesn't belong to this diagonal anyway. That's why bishop d3 is good, because we have a potential. And if you tell me about knight c5, then I tell you he's never going to do it, because all his life in this position, he avoided the trade. So that's not a problem. So you prepare e5, and you really want to make your bishop shine. If they close e5, then, then... Later, you can come back to c4, and it's not going to be the same story. So the key mm -hmm. to all is simple strategy. Knight e2 is passive, removing the knight from the center. All right, now let's Uncle Alex say. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, it's still okay. Not great. Still sort of safe. It's not like black wins by force. Um... But you're mentioning a very good point. So you notice that bishop is staring into that block of pawns. Uh, if you have finished development and you don't have anything uh, like super useful to do, it's just to improve the bishop, you change the diagonal. Should be uh, really uh, on your fundamentals there. Uh, so, uh, 92, it's, it's a move. Just defending the pawn. Can't criticize too much. I wanted to see, though, and look on uh, Alexandra's conversion, because I'm afraid this perhaps looks a little bit easier than it might be. Can we make some moves by... Uh, uh, for black, and then, like, knight d7, Dina? Knight is what if Jules goes knight d7? Oh, okay. Knight d7 yeah, so in Alex one game. Chatter says, one chatter said Andrea was... Um, proving me that knights can move backwards i agree i agree it's an improvement and we take it and we take it i accept that 
All right, knight to d7. Yeah, so let's say knight d7, rook d1, and then maybe say some uh, waiting move, like maybe uh, h6. h6. Like waiting move to ruin your king, right? And what if we take? Queen takes d3. Yeah, so takes, and I wanted to highlight that uh, maybe there is knight c5. Mm-hmm. And the only trick to watch out for could be, let's say, okay, you cannot even go rook back, but at some point, maybe some knight takes a4. You need to keep in mind, but here it doesn't work. Uh... Yeah, no, Alex, oof, I mean, she just looks very good for her queen before and uh, wait. Oh, there's a trick. a trick. Come on, Alex, don't rush. There's a trick in the position. Do you see the trick, Dina? Queen B4 is looking for trick. Rook A4, that's it. Wow, even if you get it, it's bad. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> yeah, but even, yeah, what if you go Queen B4, Rook A4, and then E5? It's great well, to see that imagine. she can literally blunder anything and she's still winning. <laughs> That's pretty encouraging. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even if you blunder this idea, yeah. She has a so much and better. Still winning. You have extra pawn and good central control. <laughs> okay, Dina, somebody is asking whether the four knights scotch is your main repertoire as white. It's a good question, and I don't want to speak badly about it because I think for beginners, it's a great opening. I, I think I reached a certain level uh, that I realized I need to fight for more, but it's only because I reached that level. I don't know what's your current rating, and you're definitely asking this because you want to play yourself and you probably like it, you want to associate yourself to your gods. Uh, not saying that I'm your god, but um, I think it's a great opening for beginners. Yeah, 1850, it's a great opening. It teaches you a lot of positional play. Um, I learned so much. I played it almost 10 years. And now I'm. it's like I'm switching to... I'm just, it's not that I'm going away from it. I'm actually just adding more. I started adding d4 to my variation to be able to handle from, as we say, uh, to serve from both hands, right hand and left hand. This I is see. The same <laughs> that we have. Yeah, to yeah. Serve the ball from both hands, <laughs> but I think it's a great opening for beginners. Why are you laughing, Chad? Why are you laughing? What's so funny? I think they're laughing because uh, you cool. mentioned that you don't want to be your student's god. All right. <laughs> right. Sorry, but Chad. I'm just speculating. Yeah, I didn't even <laughs> notice. But yeah. Um, yeah, Alexandra, man, she never had, it's like yesterday Andrea said, Alexandra was like decided that the tournament starts now, yesterday, and she almost lost, but then she won, so the tournament really did start yesterday, and today she's like, you know, second round of a new tournament, it's like a totally different Alex, we see a cold-blooded killer. That's what we see. Okay, Andrea has a great move. Apparently, if she plays f3, she's completely annihilating both f6 knight and bishop b7. So apparently, knight e2 was clever. Come on, Andrea, go f3. That's creating a barrier. Even I learned this by now. Okay, still not in love with her position, but... Yeah, f3, it's kind of the lesser evil. I'd say. Huh. Yeah, no. Um... Wait, she made the move and she did it after instantly. Oh my god. Somehow she, she understands to limit her <gasps> opponent's pieces, but she doesn't understand to improve her own bishop. Excuse <laughs> it's me. It's kind of funny. Excuse me. <laughs> How are you saying somehow? Somehow? I have spent, do I need to remind you that I have spent the entire year of telling that woman every single day, the barrier, the barrier, the barrier. Andrea has just played 
showed that she mastered another phenomenal of Russian school of chess, the barrier for both chat. F3 is a fascinating move because it blocks both the knight and the bishop. One move with a single sloppy pawn blocks two pieces, restricts two pieces at the same time. Okay? And I don't even know what sloppy means, but I assume it means something negative. Uh, no, you're right. F3, good move. Good, good, good moves. Looks like your efforts are finally paying off. Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, here but yeah, that's, that's what I'm fine. saying. How do, you, how do you do it for yourself? Like, aimed towards your opponent? It's like you care more about making your opponent feel pain instead of making your own pieces feeling better. I don't know. Why is that? You, you understand why am I saying this? Because she keeps that bishop on c4, staring into the same block of pawns. Uh, say again, sorry, I got disrupted by chat. I won't hide. I don't know. So saying that, uh, how does she understand to create this block of pawns, but she doesn't want to improve her own bishop? It's... Well, see, she still, we still have hope, right? And we can see that the bar actually went down, but let's say they do something like this. She can still move the bishop on d3 or b3. I mean, obviously d3, I guess. Well, here it's three. I mean, I guess, yeah, d3, but she can also improve her rooks. I think she understands it, but it's like, like the thing about chess is like you have millions of various rules. Just knowing all these moves or uh, rules, sorry, it's not enough. You also need to be able, like, basically, once you know the rules, then comes the toughest part. You need to put all these rules into the balance and you need to understand what is more, is, is like prevails, what is more important, what's less important in that particular moment. You see, chat? So, um, yeah, it's like now Andrea is in a stage where she accumulates, accumulates, accumulates all the knowledge. And next step is going to be to see how we, what we prioritize. And thanks Stockfish for gifted subs and everybody who subscribes. We see you with Will You Thank You So Much. One chatter asked, uh, are girls playing soon again? And yes, they actually are. Use the commands Italy to find out about the next tournament the girls are going to play in very soon already. Only one week to rest. And then we go for another fight. It's going to be easier because they're going to play into easier open. It's going to be in Italy, in Sardinia, beautiful Sardinia, where they're going to eat lots and lots and lots of uh, olives. That moment when they, they expect to olives. tell you a, a dad's joke. <laughs> and then you say lots and lots and lots of codfish <clears throat> and um, play some exciting chess. So that's going to be cool. Uh, April 27th to May, not June, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. And uh, yeah, they they got to keep their energy. They got to keep their, they better keep your energy. Also, Andrea has a set in, in Fermentera. I think on the last day or the day after she hasn't decided yet, probably last day, which is tomorrow, right after the last round. Uh, she has a music musical set, so that's kind of the update. And uh, yeah, I think I said everything. I definitely forgot something, but Alex probably. Do you have any news on the tournament that was supposed to happen after Sardinia? I wanted to ask... Um, Andrea, but then yesterday, because I actually, she actually, we actually FaceTimed fa finally first time since I, uh, Iceland. Just, she, but I, I was like, should I ask? And then I'm like, what's the point of asking Andrea? She's got, she's not going to know for real anyway. I think, I think like if anyone's going to know, it's going to be Vila. So Vila will tell us if, if there is like, I think, if, I think it's still unclear. It's possible. I mean, you know, like the reason for the reason why I say it is obviously because like Andrea, yeah, Andrea, like, okay, I'm not, no, I'm, st I stop here, I stop here, I stop here, no, no. Okay, no, uh, yeah, plenty of chess uh, incoming and uh, uh, 
yeah the next one we, i haven't really discussed much about with them on what tournament they're gonna be playing in but uh yeah if they end up playing the the b group we're definitely gonna see uh way more wins because they're gonna play uh uh players that are let's say more normal they're not gonna face like a fide master every round so in that tournament, uh, they could even fight uh, to win it. Oh, so, absolutely. Pretty exciting uh, stuff to come. Absolutely. Uh, no more Ivanchuk? Maybe in the No, this is, this a is open. actually the winner. This is the winner. So let me... Yes. Okay. Let me put the casual one. Yeah, not, win not winning yet. You put that when she has a winning position. <laughs> uh... And in the meantime, uh, Alex spent quite some time and played the prophylactic rook c1, which is a good move. Yeah. Say, telling Jules basically, hey, I know what you're trying to do, but I'm not going to let it happen. You're going to be down two pawns for, I'm afraid, not much compensation. Yeah. So, very good uh, move by Alex. And uh, things are looking pretty good. I'm actually tempted to check. How are the other players doing in the tournament? I'm curious how uh, the game between Ivanchuk and Jules Moussard is going. Right. That's uh, basically a game that can decide tournament winner. Oh, and it was a Karo Kandi advanced variation. Damn. Ivanchuk with the main line. Wow, Jules never plays e4. But he did it now. Okay, that game is highly complicated. It's only move 12 and both players have spent almost an hour. Apparently it's not only Andrea that thinks so long in the opening. <laughs> okay, back to our stuff. Why is Question mark for five? Andrea. Why is Bishop H4 bad? Uh, it is bad because the bishop has no threat. And more concretely, knight H5 coming to F4, it's going to be a pain to deal with. How Man. would Bishop E3 be different? It would be different because if you go knight H5, I can maybe do F4, no? No. Wait, is f4 a blunder? No, no f4. Bishop e4, no? No, bishop e4. No, f4, I attack your knight on h5. f4, you need to go knight back. Oh, you have to. Oh. I don't know, you need to go knight back. Whoops. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We need to go knight back. Yeah, f4, queen is attacking horse. <sighs> yeah, and then some bishop d3, maybe. Well, black is still better. It's like, right now, the evil says minus one, which is the exact same thing the evil says after bishop h4 and knight h5. Yeah, but bishop h4, it's obviously not a great bishop because initially you played bishop g5 to create pressure now that uh, okay you made black go back with the knight and defend you have no more pressure so there is no need to stay on that diagonal you don't need to like really restrict his knight to stay on d7 if you think about it that way so bishop e3 was better and kind of equal but yeah bishop h4 Mm. I guess her point is to simply go knight h5, I mean uh, to go bishop g3, but you should ask yourself what to do on knight h5. Maybe she just wants bishop f2. Huh. Now, I don't know, I, I just want to focus <laughs> on the positive side of this and say that Jules just played queen c5. Big chance of rook d1 next. 
The problem for Jules Gambit is that she's not even able to go rook takes on a4, hoping for a desperate sack, which, funnily enough, may be the best chance. Rook d1 on the board? Okay. Wow. Alex is playing uh, so well in this game. And she has so much more time on the clock. Yeah. What do you do as black? Probably rook takes on a4. Has to be. <laughs> Tried otherwise. I'm not sure you get better activity chance than rook takes on a4. Which I know it's still completely lost, but... Yeah, what do you think, Dina? Will Jules go rook takes on a4? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Still thinking. Okay. Okay, as you think, somebody's asking in the chat if Andrea can turn this around. So we can probably draw some conclusions, let's say some more accurate conclusions in like five moves from now. Black has to play accurate to get an advantage now. Right. But if he does not, the position will be pretty solid. Okay, you don't like that I made you make a move for Jules. <laughs> you didn't say rook a4, did you? Yeah, I was asking you, is okay. it time to go rook a4? Yeah, all this time I was thinking to myself, man, I must have missed what he said. It's not possible that he's saying this. It's just not possible. Why not? How bad must be white, black's position if this is the best they can come up with? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, there is rook a4 idea and some knight e4 in the position. I would be tempted to think that white should be in time with simply rook a1. Mm -hmm. Knight takes e4 and then a5. But apparently things can get very tricky with d3. Wow, that's a very interesting sack. Chat, I mean, if you, do, if, you do, if you don't do it now, you'll, you, you're not going to get any other chances, I think. No, this... Yeah, so you I'll think it's the e4. last chance to survive. She's not going to do yeah. it. I mean, she's not going to do it. <laughs> she's not going to do it. This is just some... I... I'm telling you, this is a grandmaster. Maximum international master. International master maximum level. Well, that's, that's not possible otherwise. Well, it's sort of accepting your fate and... Uh, yeah. Trying, uh, trying it. Because realistically speaking, down two pawns and having less space... There's not going to be miracles happening. Yeah. Okay, knight h5. <laughs> Played by Andrea's opponent. It's painful, but still not obvious. What if it, we try some rook? f, e1, knight f4. And then queen somewhere, queen e3. And then the bishop, I don't know. Yeah, oof, so painful in dress position. That just hurts. How are you, chatters? Are you having a good day? Oh, I know what to do. Let me open up the YouTube chat. They always have something interesting to say.
Okay, okay, I got it. How did Andrea I get this it. bone structure from the opening? It was a typical Jabawa London. If we finally managed to prep, do the prep. Oh no, he played knight h5. Good, the good thing is like the advantage kind of slowed a little bit down. The best thing here uh, is probably rook f to e1. No, what is this? I want to work with d1. Knight f4, queen e3. Well, this is fine, bro. This is fine. I predict Andrea plays a good move, which is rook f to d1. Yeah, rook f d1, rook on open file is likely. This seems a bad job of a London. Um, yeah, it's a. Uh... It's one potential line uh, coming from, uh, let's say, the hardest counter when black goes knight d7. And uh... okay, it's something that we can avoid in the future. So there is the option of playing knight b5 on move four mm -hmm. in Andreas' game. It's just that uh, this is pretty much the first time we managed to get this bishop g5 position and. Yeah, it's unlucky that her opponent uh, spent 30 minutes and uh, found uh, the safest reaction. For oh. those who missed, this was the game that we had already, and I really did not remember her line the last time she played d4, and this time she played bishop g5, because Alex improved on her prep, and they saw the most, and the opponent played very fast at d7, c4, and that was all Andrea's prep, and here Andrea was... 1 hour 30 and her opponent was 55 minutes and Ray used the 30 extra minutes to figure out the plan actually not here but after b6 and played e4 which is fine and now she played a dubious knight d2 uh yeah it's not as bad she played the very good f3 creating the barrier against the um the knight and the bishop we said that this bishop is kind of lpdo so we need to improve him now bishop h4 slightly dubious knight h5 and this is the position on the board. Wait, Dina, I have shocking news. Jules. Jules, Jules Gambit did not play rook takes on a4. You're right, shocking news. This is what you call shocking news. I think also, by the way, Jules moves your pieces. We can see that she, yeah. Yeah, she doesn't play open. Both DB and the rook. <laughs> yeah, no. I, okay, plus what? four and What? It's your half. friend. Do you not remember that it's your friend? Well, I, my friend, it's like, yeah, that's exactly why I tell her the truth about herself. This is me being a good friend. <laughs> like, it's telling the truth and no one is going to tell her, but it's not a problem. Like Alex also plays like an amateur, so that's fine. <laughs> joke, 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 joke. Joking. <laughs> joke. <laughs> I see. Yokin, okay. What are you talking about? I'm Alex is friend. Alex is plus four, by the way, which is good but news. But Alex is just, just destroying her. Alex is a terminator to be. It's like, I predict this game, Alexandra Both is gonna win her game with one hour on the clock. Look at her. Oh boy, she's just playing with her. She's just playing with her mouse at this point. Okay, this is a game over. I predict there is nothing to see here anymore. I'm sorry, Jules. You want the truth. Don't play this 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 ass opening. Don't don't play such a BS in the opening. It's like the opening. Just don't play a BS opening. That's it. But that that's fine. If you want to talk, DM me, call me, and I'll I'll give you a lecture on how to play in the openings. But you also have a coach. I don't mean to disrespect them, but whoever recommends you to play Benko, fire them. <laughs> that's a bit exaggerated. It's okay, it's okay, yeah. <laughs> On that note, after Andreas you like to Queen polarize. E3, I, I, <laughs> and Andreas Queen E3, Queen E3 is fine, I guess. No, maybe not, 95, Bishop, boo, 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 boo. Okay, okay. I don't like did, that. Did Alex find Bishop B5? She played Bishop nice. B5. Nice, Bishop B5 key move and then it's over. Like the Bishop improves, the pawns are pushing. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's actually... Even I was not expecting for such an easy sailing in the Benko while I was looking at it. Uh... Um, can, okay, on that note, guys, Andrea's a difficult situation. I updated the board. I 
shall leave you for another yes, coffee. Dina. If that's okay yes. with you, Alex. Yes, Thank take you. a break as I will try to explain how is Andrea not going to lose in the next five moves. Man, we are reaching I'll our peak viewership 10k today. Uh, all of you people watching this, you are too late. Alex's game is already over. She already won. Okay, I I'm sabotaging. No, but yeah, Alex is just... It's a new Alex. This is a new era of Alexandra Botas. That's all. I'm leaving you. Bye. Yes, now... Um... Alex is okay, not over. You cannot see her in the frame, but she's just uh, going for a casual walk as she feels that her position is completely winning. She has an hour and 14 minutes on the clock. Her opponent, less than 20 minutes. And yeah, she's up two points. And uh, the problem for Black is that Alexandra is ready to just go uh, bishop c6 next. And. Yeah, bishop c6, also potentially rook c3. There's actually so many ways to win now and convert the two extra pawns. So, uh, yeah, Alexandra doing great. I'm not sure what her accuracy level is so far, but I would guess in the 90s. Andrea losing. Andrea is worse, but I gotta be honest, I'm looking at potential variations with the computer and the way to be better as black is not obvious at all. Like, in order for Andrea to actually be in trouble, her opponent needs to play some aggressive g5 move in the upcoming lines just to assert dark square's dominance, which is far from obvious to me. And also, keep in mind that Andrea's opponent doesn't have that much time on the clock. He also has 30 minutes, so... If he wants to go this aggressive g5 and so on... He will probably get down to 10 minutes. And despite having a great position, such risky play can also backfire. Not g5 immediately, it's maybe after like knight e5 and then some g5. So yeah. I'm just saying he's not winning with natural moves, as some of you may be afraid of. It's not over until it's over. Tanya Sachdev. I see. That's a quote. What move are we on? Uh, so... Uh, Andrea's game is still somewhat in the opening. Move 18. She's doing well uh, time-wise. 40 minutes left. Position-wise, not so great. But hey, we learning. Is that the Andrea new merch? <laughs> no. It's just uh, the good luck hit, apparently. Okay, knight h5. Wait, what is going on? I'm getting some developments, but did they play any moves? Oh, 95, best move. Damn. Let's hope Andrea goes bishop d3. Because bishop b3 would allow the unpleasant bishop a6. So it's critical not to allow that activation for free. Although... Both moves are not particularly encouraging. Hmm. <sighs> yeah, difficult position, difficult opponent. In Andrea's game, he's a little bit uh, underrated, I would say. So you can see that her opponent's rating is 2100. Let, let me remind you that uh, he has basically destroyed a Grandmaster in the first round. 
Actually, I have no information of that. I know he just won. Could have also been a lucky win against the GM. But yeah, all in all, he defeated the Grandmaster. He's winning ELO this tournament. And so far, he's playing a good game. We'll just, yeah, hope for the best with Andrea. So he can be cocky and lose this one. Now, the other side of the coin is that he was doing so well. He made many draws against 2200 players. But two rounds ago, he lost against the 2000. So, hey, there is also that possibility. There is still hope. Am I sure the GM even showed up? <laughs> I see. Okay, I'm gonna take more questions from the YouTube chat after that one. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm reading the YouTube chat. Kind of makes me want to go back to the Twitch chat. Um. <laughs> oh, we have Rook CB8 in Alex game. That is only making things worse, apparently. Wait. There is actually something quite interesting that I'm struggling to understand, but Alexandra already has a concrete win. Alexandra has a great moment to play bishop c6 and then pawn to b4. And it's actually very clever that after, let's say, knight takes on a4, we can finally use this uh, rook from f3 and bring it over to the a file, pinning the knight and... Forcing resignation? Come on, Alex. Don't be an amateur. You have to slow down. We're missing precious streaming time. Don't play so fast. Win slower. Man. I should tell her this more often. Um. Uh... Okay, we have an interesting question uh, in the YouTube chat. Somebody is asking, uh, why is Andrea not playing... Uh... And the knight b5 line on uh, e6 on move 4. Uh, I explained this already. But it's because uh, if black is sneaky and plays the French defense uh, move order, like d5, e6. Um, okay, if you go knight c3, bishop f4, there is still bishop b4 move that uh, you have to know how to play. They can basically force you into it. But yeah, knight b5 is, uh, could be something we may try in the future. But you never know. Knight b5 is a good line. It's uh, technically the best. But for beginners, uh, I would normally recommend e3 if you're like below 2000 and you mainly play online. I would definitely recommend what Andrea is playing right now. Because your opponents will never <laughs> play this stockfish way. Okay, this is technically a great line for black, but let me remind you that Andrea has an amazing score. Despite her not getting really much out of this. <laughs> Did pretty well so far. In Andrea's game, I would probably prefer bishop d3 instead of bishop b5. 
bishop e5 looks a bit too loose to me. Why give up c2 pawn? So bishop d3 have it defended. Alexandra goes e5, which is a move that uh, is good, but I cannot understand it. I guess, yes, you have all the time in the world, but maybe she realized that she's winning too quickly and needs to slow down and not miss the precious streaming time. Probably was that. Because the way she played this far, she can probably finish this game whenever she wants. Does Andrea still have the g4 threat? Actually, if you're not careful, g4 may hurt you. Because if you play knight f6, I take the knight and then can pick up h6 pawn. So yeah, very much still having g4 on the cards. You can definitely expect her to <laughs> play that type of aggressive move. No, we cannot play g4 right now. Because we have to solve the issue of the hanging bishop first. So. Yeah. Man, this is a bit annoying because with some better luck in the prep, we could have very well uh, talked about another double win day for the both these girls. For those of you that have missed the legendary day of yesterday, we had a double win. One of the wins was a bit questionable in a way that it was unexpected. But... Andrea played the uh, perfect game yesterday. It was actually a high quality game. I would say she played like a 2350 player yesterday in the Sicilian. She won a model game in the Maruti, foiling the pawn structure and then squeezing the end game down a pawn. That was actually pretty clean by Andrea. She had 92 accuracy in a long game, like a 50 moves long game. So, today, we still need a bit of luck in Andrea's game, but if you ask me what do I think is more likely, Alexandra winning from the position that she had yesterday, or Andrea winning from the position she has now, I think that question is easy to answer. So far, we have a much better situation than yesterday, so we can be optimistic. And we have a move by Andrea. Bishop where? Oh no, did she go bishop b3? Bishop e2? Why give up the pawn? I don't understand this. Why do we give up the pawn? No. Huh? F? F4, you guys know. So queen c2, f4. You guys didn't see there is rook c3 incoming. And after queen d4, you're missing the key move. Knight takes a four. What? What the hell is this? <gasps> I see. Playing for tricks. Interesting. Bishop e2, not so bad. Problem though, can her opponent just go g5? Allow bishop takes on g5. Yeah, that's actually fine. 
Her opponent has a great move, which is g5. Now Andrea didn't lose concentration. Wait. Alex just played f5. She's completely winning, but <laughs> honestly, it, to me, it looks like she's just trying to terrorize Jules because Alexandra could easily end the game on the queen side by calculating two moves, bishop c6 and b4, and the pawns are promoting. But it looks like she just wants to corner Jules in every single possible aspect of the chessboard. Which is, yeah, possible, because how good the position is. F5 is a good move at Alexandra. If G takes on F5, her plan is not to take with the rook immediately, because that would uh, leave the B3 pawn undefended. But the point is to play a rook F4 first. Keeping the f3 rook defending b3 and then taking on f5. And this way you manage to create an additional target on f7. Which, yeah, you don't need to play super positional when you have two extra pawns, but... It's possible. Okay, knight g6 in Andrea's game, which was not the best move. Expecting bishop f2... Can he take on c2 after? Oh, apparently that's just a free pawn. Huh. Okay, we have a question in the chat asking if I ever played uh, in Edinburgh or Edinburgh. I know there's a tricky pronunciation with that. I actually have a funny story about playing in uh, Edinburgh. I played there uh, once. It's a very nice city. And uh, it's famous for kind of nice architecture. I believe the storyline is that uh, Harry Potter was uh, filmed in that uh, city. But basically, long story short, I was playing in the Scottish Championship, which is actually, at the time at least, was an open tournament. <laughs> and it didn't go particularly great for me. I think I just lost some uh, ELO points. I was basically like number five in the tournament as a 2400. But I have one uh, tragic story, chess-wise, because... I was playing against the local uh, 2200 that was late 29 minutes to our game. And the regulation in that tournament is that, okay, once you're uh, half an hour late, you just get forfeited, you lose the game. And because he was late only 29 minutes and came to the game running, I was so tilted that... I played so bad, couldn't focus, and I lost. <laughs> Despite being the clear favorite. I was just like getting ready to go home, and I mentally checked out when I saw like 29 minutes. I have to say, that is one of the most pathetic games that I've ever had. <laughs> but hey, life goes on. Yeah, so he started with 29 minutes, so he had to play with one hour only, instead of uh, one hour and a half. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good story for my opponent, that's right. In case I uh, become a bit more popular on YouTube, he can tell his friends. Oh, you know that uh, Alex Vanze idiot that makes videos? <laughs> I was late half an hour and I destroyed him anyways. <laughs> Indeed, it's a good story. Pretty good story. Also, I believe he was late because 
he came from work and he was preparing for our game. So actually, it's not like he, the fact that, from what I understood, he wasn't late to our game because of traffic or something. He was just preparing for our game and he forgot about the time. <laughs> and he was late because of that. <laughs> so, yeah, okay, enough with that, guys. Focusing on the games. Andrea's opponent rightfully takes the pawn on c2. Luckily for us, if Andrea plays knight b3, the situation is not that bad yet. Still has the bishop pair. And she has saved the, the worst game against the Kazakh girl, so... We know Andrea is very resilient. And in the meantime, uh, quite a few moves have been played in Alexandra game and she officially has more time on the clock than what she started with. <laughs> that is quite funny. She has an hour and 40 minutes on the clock. But okay, her problem is that... Jules is also gaining time, so it's not like she can win by flagging. She has to actually start making some good moves. Alexandra refuses to calculate, which is... Yeah. Playable still. But if she wanted, this game could have been over like 10 moves ago. Did I hear it correctly? What? Alexandra has more time on the clock than when she started. Yes, she just got uh, the Am time I control. <laughs> I think well, I the... told you from move ten that Alexandra was gonna was gonna was gonna win. This, ladies and gentlemen, this is a new Alexandra. This is nothing we knew before. This is a new Alexandra. Oh wow, I love how Mama both is and I have the same alliteration in common. I always I always write the word loose with two O. Oh I see. <laughs> Andrea's game. It's okay guys. Bishop you see that passive. Dina is roasting everybody? Not even uh, Mama Botes, not even her. She won't get an easy time. <laughs> Knight to g6, bishop f2, and queen to c2. Andre is not losing yet. Dina, that's why I love you. I know, I know. Us immigrants, we shall be united in this world of native Americans. That didn't sound right. I'm sorry. Can we erase that phrase, please? Whenever you want to undo something, you have to add in-game, Dina. That's yeah. the provisional way of doing it. You right. say either in-game or in GTA. You right, should have known Mama that by Botas. now. Right. It's like, Mom, Botas has to go to work. Someone needs to work here. Please do. Please do. Alex... What were you saying? Sorry, I interrupted you. It was the first and the last time. No, I was, uh, I was saying many things. You missed my, uh, the story of my life, of how one of I my heard, opponents I actually, was... Actually, I had you on the... Like, I was listening to you. You were telling the story about oh, some, I see. some guy you got in the it. Romanian championship or something. No, it was in the Scottish championship, actually. In the Scottish <laughs> championship. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we don't have to go back to that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, big moment in Andrea's game because she has to play knight b3, getting some activity, coordinating her pieces. Okay, the only encouraging thing is that 
it looks like black is gonna go knight f4 and perhaps win the light square bishop so we'll have um, opposite colored bishops which may not be super trivial but i am just being very optimistic here with that assessment <laughs> Okay, Alex is trying to dominate by doubling on the seventh file, but I don't understand uh, what is she trying to do because there are no pawns on the seventh rank. She's not playing on her strong side. That's what bothers me. Can you okay, she's so to winning. Me why she decided to go bishop e2 and, and not protect, keep pawn protected? Uh, yeah, uh, the chatters figured it out. Andrea had some trick with f4 in mind. Mm. Okay, I think I understood uh, Alexandra's idea. I think she probably wants to go rook f6 next. Oh, come on, Dina, you don't have to go deep down the knight takes on f4 idea. I Black had an want. easier way of doing it anyways. <laughs> Today is a very important game in the tournament, by the way. It's their po posse, Ivanchuk, who is facing the other posse, Jules Mustard. Yeah, Jules Mustard has... Good position, apparently. No, the mic is not too far. Just a little. Uh, yeah, if... Uh... Okay, Rook F8 played by Jules, which I think now uh, gives Alex uh, easy time to push the pawns and then the game. That's good. So Jules was afraid of rook f6 coming, so she tries to stop that idea. But on the other hand, now the pawns will be able to be pushed. So Alex immediately goes for it. Oh my god. Takes, takes. I see how Jules is moving her pieces. It gives me OCD. You mean as in uh, like she's upset or what? Jules Gambit or like, moves by the her way... pieces like Beth Harmon. Basically, never I saw a chessboard before in her life. Which is not true, even though she took a gap of 10 years from competitive chess. She, yeah, she's back to it, and she's been playing a lot. But there yeah. is something in it. There is something beautiful. I heard into your Beth Harmon, she said for her learning how to move the pieces was like dancing. There's a lot of choreography in it. Mm. You see. But it does give me an OCD. And it gives me a, a bigger OCD than watching Alexander Botas moving her pieces. Because she does like this. <laughs> hey, as long as they are not uh, pressing on the clock with a piece. This is exactly is what allowed. Jules has just did. And you were saying this because you saw it, right? Oh, did she? She's I didn't exactly, notice. literally a second ago, this is exactly how she pressed the clock. She took that. Okay, rope you're not and supposed to the press room. the clock with your piece. <laughs> Don't worry, Jules is casting for Queen's Gambit too. I see. What is up with Queen's Gambit? At some point there were rumors that it's gonna be a new season, but apparently... Apparently nothing. Oh girl, Jules, if you're watching this, just call me, okay? Just call me, baby. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you... Everything you did wrong, but I'm also going to tell you how you can improve on yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, Alexandra can spare us and push a5. Literally promote. Will she do it? Or will she play g3? No, it's g3. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not running anywhere, but... She's being... Very cautious. She just wants to win by not calculating any moves, which is a nice way to win if you can. Okay, rook fc1, 
Oh my God, what is Andrea doing? You're not supposed to allow that. No. Rooks are good. Don't give them up. No. The gremlin. Yeah, the problem is that black species are gonna obviously infiltrate in the attack, but it's okay. This game, hard to really criticize her for her moves. It was mainly some bad luck in the prep. She didn't really get to play a game today, which is... Yeah, unlucky. But hey, her opponent's also, I do believe, a bit underrated. So. Losing like this is fine. The other losses... Still, Andrea, all in all, had competitive rounds every game. Even the game she lost that Marochi against the Indian uh, teenager. That was quite a surprising game, simply because... Uh, Okay, Andrea was not feeling super comfortable in that pawn structure, but even after uh, sacrificing that piece and entering the complications, if she was not losing her most important asset, the A3 pawn, she probably had a fortress, in my opinion, so... Yeah, still competitive every game. So all in all... Uh, even after today, I think she is gaining rating. Right. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Queen takes C1. Yeah, Queen C1 played on the board. Hmm. Why is this so bad, actually? It's bad because uh, the rooks are coming in, the knights are coming to f4, and also the bishop, I suspect, will somehow infiltrate via e6. So that's why uh, it's many factors. Why are rooks stronger here than the queen? I actually have an answer to this question. So usually, well, apart from the fact that, like, so... Rook plus rook, it's 5 plus 5. It means 10, right? Queen is only 9. So it's already one pawn ahead. Plus the second pawn is an extra pawn. So already like 11 if you do the math against 9. And then mm -hmm. the power of queen can really be seen when opponent's king is weak. Or when the pawn structure is destroyed and weak. Here we or see... Or when there are no open files, I would say. Yeah. Here we see two pawn islands only. Super solid and strong pawn structure for black. And an extremely, extremely secure king. There is no way to attack it. There are no checks possible. So in such kind of positions, rooks are twice better than a queen. So all these factors basically are the reason why Andrea should not have went here. And unfortunately, I don't want to sound snob, but it is what it is. Once again, basic strategy and math skills of a primary school. No, it's... Uh... Okay, here it's clear that the rooks are stronger just because they have obvious open files to use, because if there are no open files to activate your rooks, I mean, the queen is not that bad, but... True. Yeah. Yeah. Here, uh, we can infiltrate and... Uh... Yeah, rook c1 is the kind of move she should be able to realize it's bad, but on the other hand, she had a difficult position to play uh, regardless, so can't be that upset about Probably. Yeah, yeah, it was a tough situation because she got uncomfortable with the queen uh, yeah. inside PTSD from the other game. I agree, in a way, yeah. But, um, yeah, would have been better to play anything, like even G3 controlling the F4. 
knight b3. Wow. And here this rook c1 is already ready, but yeah. You can easily overmiss such a move. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was if very you, unpleasant. If you have an attack, queen plus minor piece, a queen is better than two rooks, isn't it? Well, knowing that two rooks also have that minor piece, right? If we're talking about material um, equality. But yeah, it's like basically the queen needs targets. Here, queen has zero target. Like usually it's the queen or weak pawns. Here is like absolutely zero target. So it's like here we're going to witness that same thing that a guy has when he develops his queen in front in the opening in front of all minor pieces and then has nowhere to put this queen just running around like a chicken with her head cut off like this queen around mm -hmm. the board we're kind of gonna see the yes. same thing <laughs> i see i see that <laughs> that's a good point yeah uh, okay on the bright side jules gambit has no moves so. Is it a bright side? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's a bright side for, for. Yeah, it is a bright side, I guess. No, it's very bright side. Okay, I'll just give you that. Alex wasn't super comfortable about going into the banco. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I hope her now she she feels better about this opening because probably. <laughs> Yeah. Probably after this game, yes. She's just completely. I think she just Alex. I think if she plays every game like this, oh my gosh, she's gonna win the the two. Okay, she has. Only okay, one round. come on, Alex, you got this. Just go a five, push it all the way to a seven, and then uh, there is no way for Black to stop uh, Rook c eight and promotion. Um, come on, Alex. Calculate for one time in this game. A5. Now or never. Push the peep, Alex. Think of Hikaru. No, she has to play A5 because if she doesn't play A5, it's going to become a situation like her opponent yesterday. Like, okay, you don't calculate two moves to win, then right. you deserve to lose at the end. Come on, Alex. Okay. Luckily, there is no counterplay whatsoever on the radar. Okay, she did it. Nice. She learned from her opponent yesterday. Yay! A5 best move. Yay. Also, like, you see Jules' body language. She feels she's in trouble. She feels insecure. And the problem is, like, she looked like that from the move number one and i don't blame her first time i saw alexander bota sitting in front of me myself i felt also very very much intimidated but yeah i mean i actually like i feel a lot of um consideration towards jules even though i'm very harsh on her is that unlike sisters she's actually obsessed with chess she's extremely passionate about chess she wants to learn and that's very rewarding that's very rewarding she doesn't hate chess every single uh minute she plays it or feels it's boring so um it's it's sad to see when people like like let's say who love chess so much and work on chess get less results or less rating but i can assure you it's only temporary Obviously, if Jules continues to work on chess and dedicate to chess, she's gonna she's gonna um, gain rating very fast. No, that's uh, true. I was checking out her games, and I believe in uh, last year she had over ten thousand games on Chess.com. So that's a lot of games, even uh, for me. <laughs> Bro, I mm. literally when I was sitting in front of Alex for first time, I was everything inside of me was shaking, everything. I mean, it is like, I think, yeah, it, I still feel it somehow. Obviously now it's, it's, it changed because we kind of be too, be, like started hanging out more. It kind of became more casual and you get used to everything. But first time sitting in front of Alex, you feel like, oh my God, 
oh my god like everything inside you is is, is shaking so it's it's normal it's normal i but, see but also that's insightful also like when i was um young still like started only competing with adults i think uh russian junior under 20 so i was what 19 and i was like um like a little early chicken like maybe 2200 just reached 2200 for the first time how are you chicken at 2200 yeah it's like almost <laughs> everybody else was like a 2300 i was like a bottom seat or like at the russian junior championship maybe i was 18 i was like i was sitting like this as well Like, really, really, like, really, like, my body language, everything could see. Like, literally, my coach came to me and said, I could see from move number one, you look, you, you sit there and look like a loser, like a beaten horse. And uh, we need to change that. Like, we're not going to do anything good in this tournament if you have so so few confidence in yourself and your chest. You got to sit like this, you know, like, put your, like shoulders like extra layer like i did today you know it's like show them you're a winner like look look at alex look at alex alex sits there like a queen alex is there like a winner that's the way to go oh i see that's okay i think it also depends on uh on genetics a little bit because some players they look in body language nervous but on the inside they are very confident like mm, for mean... instance do you really yeah, I think I think it's all like body language can say exactly what you feel inside in this particular moment. But oh, tell me, give me the example. I want to hear your example. For instance, uh, I think uh, I was having in mind this example of Fabiano. Like he, at some point, I think he mentioned it that he looks a bit nervous on the outside, but he manages to keep it very nice. Uh, okay, that's like actually like a good example. I agree. He, yeah, but... <laughs> Yeah, okay, Fabian is probably an exception. But usually you can tape you can tell. Like yesterday, remember we were looking at Andreas Alexander Story's opponent and he had completely different body language when he was chilled and relaxed, he knew he was winning, and then he realized he was he, he was throwing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh <laughs> I see. See what you mean. Yesterday it was something special. If you guys missed it, I don't think I've ever seen a game of chess that ends up in both players literally crying. Yeah. So you have to check out the VOD from yesterday if you don't believe me. <laughs> I think he even posted it on Twitter and he said, I hate chess. He posted it. Oh, wow. Really? I need to check Twitter. I haven't checked it in like months. What did I miss? No, it's Update just... Update me um, on the Twitter drama, Alex's Dina. opponent yesterday posted a screenshot from when he resigned and Alex tried to pep talk him, telling him that she feels the same. And he posted that screenshot with the caption, I hate chess. Oh. Yeah. I see. Um... Uh... Yeah, I mean, this game not so emotional today. Alexandra had everything under control. I mean, today A5. you were bored, literally. <laughs> no, I mean, I would like to be this bored every day and just everything go uh, exactly as planned. I agree. Uh, I agree. The problem wasn't this tournament that everybody played in our prep and <laughs> things went badly. It was just that... Um, yeah, they managed to find some weak spots in our repertoire that are not going to be there in the next tournament. So definitely uh, optimistic about the upcoming uh, Sardinia tournament. Sardinia! Starting in 10 days from now on. We are going to eat codfish in Sardinia. What do you say, guys? I see. Are we gonna eat codfish in Sardinia? Is it true that uh, pizza is better in Italy? Or that's just a myth? 
It's Sambro Science again. In Italy, use the command Italy to get more about Sardinia. There we go in starting June, starting April 27th to May 4. What do you think, Dina? You I haven't replied move. to my question. What was your move, sir? What was your question, sir? Oh! Brilliant move? Double exclaim? What? That's a scam. That's a, such That's... a scam. Bro literally <laughs> removed the knife from the ring, which was slim, to the center and gets double exclaim. Such a scam. Don't believe everything you read on the internet chat. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Just come handing out double exclaims like candy. Okay, somebody is asking in the chat whether Alexandra's time is correct. Does she really have an hour and 40 minutes? Uh, yes, and that is because uh, she got the time control. She got an additional 30 minutes after move 40 uh, because she had a pretty easy opening. Like first 20 moves were pretty straightforward and she spent virtually no time. And the rest was, yeah, not great, but also not bad. So she just kept the game going and the advantage increased. Oh, you asked me and about here we the go. pizza. Yes, I asked oh, you whether you asked me about the pizza, pizza okay. is better in Italy. Okay, I have. I've, ne I I've have never experience. been to Italy. I have an experience. Yes, tell me. The only thing, okay, that's like the best. Okay, I've been to Napoli. I've been to Napoli, ne Napoli, Neapol. I don't know how to say. Uh, uh, Naples. 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 Naples? No, not that. No, name. Naples. 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 I've been to Naples. And this is In the, the mountains. place. This is yes. the place where the margarita pizza was born. And I can tell you, Italian pizza, especially for Americans, is like you. If you haven't been in Italy and tried Italian pizza, then you don't know what's pizza because Italian pizza is like soup inside of pizza. You like you cannot eat it with your hands. You gotta eat it with a fork mm. and a knife. That being said, it's delicious. Delicious. But it, it's oh, it's see. completely different. It's not like dry this dry thing that you just like can slap your, your with your face other people. No, I see. No, no, no. I I understand. Okay, I guess the answer is yes. What do you say, chat? I see the Nobody famous... Nobody out pizzas the hat? <laughs> yeah. I see lots of famous people in chat who have uh, nothing better to do but come and watch sisters play. Wait, who's famous in the chat? I see a coffee chess representative. Doctor, Dr. Brian, don't you have better things to do? Don't you have patients to treat? Didn't you, like, promise free consultation to Andrea? She literally like run away with her camera because of that. I can do I can do an Ivanchuk moment right now and ask Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> Is it like Alex Who? Yeah. So for the yes. guys, yesterday. So this is a this is a private joke. Um, I'll give you the context. <laughs> yesterday, Alex, uh, Andrea was preparing for her opponent. Uh, together with. They were at lunch at the same time as usual. Andrea only has time to call her coach when she eats. And uh, yes. um, Ivan Chuk was near, Jules Master was near, and uh, uh, Andrea was on a call with Alice, and she said to Ivan Chuk, my coach, Alice Banzea, is preparing me. He's showing me this Jabava London. What do you think? And he's like, Alex who? Yes, but... Uh... While it was heartbreaking in the moment, uh, it started being very funny because 
a few seconds later, he thought that Andrea was Alexandra. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> we easily moved on from that. <laughs> the fact that uh, he confused them was even funnier. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I got away with that easily. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, Jules Gambit. Uh, yeah, thinking. Girl, it's too late. It's too late. You start thinking. Better resign and call Mama Dina. She's gonna tell you everything you need to know about chess. Alex is so bored. She literally went away from from the board. Who will resign first, Jules or Andrea? <laughs> yeah, I was Probably actually Jules. having the same question in my head, but I agree. I think Jules is going to finish earlier. For Andrea, this position is still highly complicated. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I wanted to say that Jules had some good games this tournament. Okay, she lost uh, plenty, made two draws. But she was completely winning against the 2100 and somehow made it slip. So, as you said, she's very passionate. She had some good games. But Alexandra is just uh, playing like a machine today. Like a well-oiled machine. Pawn coming to a7 and then its brother, the B-pawn, will show up to this <laughs> party. And it just feels like when the adults are playing football with the kids. <laughs> yeah. Man. Shouldn't have Alex pushed the beep on first? Uh, everything was working at this point. Yeah, I told you. She was like from the start. She was in the position from the opening where every single move would be winning. Now this is a big, uh, big moment for Alexandra because uh, the Benko Gambit, despite uh, the fact that, okay, uh, I should give you an advantage, things are far from being this straightforward. So very big psychological win. And uh, Alexandra is putting herself in a position where if we manage to guess what her opponent will play tomorrow and she will be in prep, she has very good chances of finishing on another win. And then she she won't even lose rating this tournament, which is, yeah, great news. There is a decent shot. <laughs> Alex will play against Andrea. Not really, because they also have same colors right now. But could be, who knows? <laughs> Who knows? All right, we have more moves. Yeah, it's, it's hard to comment chess when it's so one-sided. For I do have to say, Andrea's position. Who would have thought it's minus five? Who would have thought? Um, like it's not evident. Not even for me, it's evident. Hopefully something changes than time scroll. But the problem is, once again, this is a lesson for Andrea. Um, absolutely no weaknesses. So her queen is useless. This is that moment of your life when you don't need, you don't need. Oh, big moment in wife. Alexandra game. King Yeet, sorry to interrupt Dina, but it's a moment for Russian school of chess. Why is King Yeet bad? Because oh. of rook h7. Wait, was that it? Knight d7, I forgot. Maybe it's a mistake. And then bishop e5. Oh, wait, what? Uh, I think she missed 97 idea. I think she oh. rushed a bit, but it's still winning. Alexandra had an easier time by uh, pushing b4, b5. But oh she just uh, went for Alexandra, the cheap trick. Yeah, God, relax. Because look, if, if rook f, if rook h here, the knight f, the knight f, oh, sorry, no. eight, and then it's a draw. So okay, even. actually, no, look, so this is fine because after knight d7, I think we can even force the king and pawn end game. So bishop b5, rook a7, <gasps> and... Look at Alex's reaction. Look at Alex's reaction. She took a few seconds before writing the move. 
she realized she, you were so right. You were so right. She missed it because she just... Yeah, but I think, uh, I think you can... Yeah, okay, that's a good point. But I think she can still go rook d7 and then g4. And that's waning completely. No? You need to calculate a little bit. What? But yeah. You want to sacrifice? No, yeah, I want to go for uh, king endgame. So bishop b5 and then uh, rook a7. Oh. Oh, you don't have to rush. You can even do... No, 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 I want to pin first. Bishop b5, yeah, or g4 right away. Yeah, G no, but you... There yeah, exactly. No, I want g4 to break. We need to break Dina to yeah. win the pawns. Yeah, no, go G4. to the pawn endgame. True, true, true. That's a good one. Yeah, she can still go to the pawn endgame. So she missed this move, but it's comfort zone here so much that... Uh, yeah, so it... basically, chat, uh, neither rook cannot, like, go get... Or king cannot go away. It's like, it's a double pin. Oh, my God. It's a double pin. Yeah, it's pin. a double pin. <laughs> wow. Even the rook can unpin with a check. How the heck the do you unpin, unpin here? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the best option. But first time Alexander is thinking, but yeah. Just don't go rook h7. But she won't. She won't. Okay, bishop b5 pin is literally the most obvious thing in the world. And then uh, you can do king h3 or g4. Both are equally winning. Right. But it's good that she takes like even five minutes here to kind of... Uh, get familiar with this position as you correctly highlighted uh, she took a bit of time to write down the move which is usually a sign of being completely shocked yeah although yeah it's okay she she has this fresh experience in mind from yesterday that you don't want to rush in the throwing mess up your advantage okay she has way more time than her opponent but still Yeah, basically we go into this end game and we take and then we just bring the king because we have a yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. King G three, King F four, and it's Chad. Do I need to explain to you that? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's up? show. So King F four, King F five, and let's show the chorus. No, 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 not to that one. That's how you mess it up, Dina. No, 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 no. no. You need to go to the D six pawn. Why? Don't give counterplay. What kind of play? I, yeah, so I take and go queen. for the d6 pawn. I know you queen. Oh yeah, I know, Chad, but... it's because because we are first to cross No, go the king Ecuador. king f5. No, go We're king f5. Uh... You don't need to win by one tempo. You can do king f5. Yeah, it's easier. He's, he's actually right. Uncle uncle um <laughs> Come Alex on. is right. We got we got to Give gotta uncle some play. credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it, this is called, I know in French it's called trebuchet. I don't know how it's yeah, called. Yeah, it's trebuchet. Yeah, I, uh, trebuchet. actually, when I uh, presented Silman's Endgame book, oh, Alex is going for it right away. That was unnecessary, but she calculated. Oh, boy. Yeah, this so Alex could have. Uh... Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay, guys, okay, this she's is gonna important, do an, important, an important instructive moment for, for you here. Um. When yeah, she did you my see plan. your opponent cannot unpin, you don't have to rush. Ah, uh, yeah, she does no. this. Okay, now this Good. is and she. You just go to the d6 pawn now, and you get a trebuchet. Yeah, good one. Yeah. Okay, this can we one. analyze it now? Yeah, see how it goes. Maybe something changed. Bishop takes and then. Trade the pawns. How is that going, Dina? Show us a line. Table what? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what you do here. What you do here, Chad. So black will try to come via c5. And That's the, the only thing plan. Is, even if you block me oppositionally, I have this guy. Yeah, lost. yeah. No, but the only thing black will try to come the other way via c5. Yeah. Yeah, so king c7. What do you want to hear? Yeah, take, take. 
It's not like Alex didn't spoil anything, but I mean, she did a waiting move. But she she did, she could have started with G four. It's like she could she probably yeah. won a tempo. She could have won two tempi. But actually, yeah. I take my words back because um, even oh even if I want to be smart and I go king like B five would be the right move here. And then you yeah go... you can you can you can show that idea show king B five. So and then... here it's corresponding square. So maybe they had king F six. Yeah. Yeah, and then king e7, deal... and that's how I win. I yeah, come king we... e7 and I force you. Yeah, if Imagine I don't have this that pawn. pawn is not there. Imagine this pawn is on d5, and we got this position here, loses the side that has like that has to play. It's a bit, yeah. Obviously, with b3 pawn, everything is lost. Because you don't want to go like first. Here, for example, if y didn't have this b pawn, then y would lose. Because they have to play. But think, since they have this one. Oh, it's black to play, yeah. Uh, very professional conversion by Alex. Yeah, I take my word back because she played g4 here. So she understood that she doesn't have to rush. Man, Alex took Jules to school. <laughs> it's a slaughter. Literally, engine says made in 36 moves. What accuracy is Alex for this game? Surprisingly, only 90.5. Yeah, that's okay. So, yeah, it's still in my uh, uh, in my range of, okay, there are games that are even like 90 or maybe 88 that uh, just look perfectly played, even though, yeah, theoretically the accuracy is not as high when it's only 88, but from a human perspective, it can be, yeah, just... Very instructive and perfect play. So, okay, let's see whether she's gonna go. This is important. Will she go the easy route to f5? Oh, yeah. Let's I think she see. has to choose easy route. The Come on, Alex. The thing is, with don't. king g5, it's, you need to calculate it's only one tempo. Whereas king f5, you don't need to calculate anything. Let's see. This is, this is the moment of truth. This is the moment that's gonna define how solid Alexander is. Oh yes. no. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. Man, Wait, so I she's she going to calculated it. It's... No, she probably did. Oh man, this was so unnecessary, it breaks my heart. Literally the moment I say it. It's but it is still a temple, um, Benjamin, because B pawn doesn't. Yeah, it's a, it's black queen. doesn't basically black doesn't promote. But man, if you're like one tempo short in your calculation, yeah, the it's game so easy is, to uh, blunder when you calculate soiled. this. Basically, you need to understand who's pawn crossing the Ecuador Ecuador first, and here it's why with one move to spare. Oh no, Jules resigned. Sister, okay. Congratulations oh, no. to Alexandra Bodas, who has shown today how much she wants blood. That was the best game Alexandra played so far in this tournament, without a doubt. Finishing, Jesus Lord, finishing one hour, 40 minutes on the clock for Alexandra. Complete domination. Morally, mentally, physically, on the board, in the body language, on the prep. Honestly. She dominated physically, yes. <laughs> she did in the body language. What do we say? What do we say, chat? I uh, feel like I feel like I need to um you know what I'm going to send Jules a voice message. I'm going to send Jules a voice message. Hey dear. I need to talk to your coach. I need to have a serious conversation with your coach. That Benko 
I mean, you fought well, you fought like a beast. But when you get a lost position after move 5, unfortunately, there isn't much you can do. That being said, don't let this loss break you down. I do need to talk to your coach. And Alex won! Yay! I'm still sad that she could have waited for one more hour to farm some streaming time, but hey, she gets uh, an easier day in terms of having some extra time. <laughs> Those beginner mistakes that Alex did. You're not allowed to finish with so much time on your clock. I mean, honestly, mm. uh, Chad. Am I right or am I right? And we got a raid from Jules Gambit. Thank Maybe you so the much mods for the heard your message, the Dina. Thank you so much, Jules. You thought so well. You thought so well. If only you were not lost from the move two, then you would have you would have had better chances. I I I feel I feel frustrated, but it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I send you a voice message. You you should listen to it. It's not your fault. You just you were set up. You it was a setup. I blame everything on I don't blame it on you. Okay, apparently we have Andreas Cam back, Dina. Alright, so let me get that ready for us. In a second. In a second. Okay, 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 okay. Finally. Finally. Give me a second. Dina has no right to trash talk. Look at her recent tournaments. Mr. Ye 2024. <laughs> I cannot wait. To hear, I cannot give me that beautiful person, beautiful person who would like to talk about my chats. Give me that person. Give me that person. Unfortunately, unlike everybody's here, I don't have the access to stronger people than me who can tell me something about my chats. Unfortunately, but if I were if I could, if only I could, I would learn so much. See, unlike you, Chatter, I am always open to feedbacks and I want to learn and I want to learn from my mistakes. If only there was a person who could tell me about my mistakes the way I tell about others' mistakes to people who are lower rated than me. Uh, no, wait, I don't think you need to <laughs> get fired up by the trolls, Dina. But in the meantime, do you believe that we can actually be back in the game with Andrea? Somehow, this is actually not as clear as it could have been. Damn. What? I think if Andrea plays H4, it's... Game on. Okay, black is capturing multiple pawns, but your knight is kind of stupidly placed and your rooks are scattered all over the board. I don't know. Maybe it's nothing, but the computer thinks black's uh, advantage from minus five is only now minus two, which is actually quite a lot considering how easy the position was to play. Nice. Amaze me. Amaze me. That's beautiful. Will we get another dramatic swindle? Do you guys have enough energy to comprehend another memorable swindle like yesterday? Damn. That would be too much. I don't know. But let's hope. Pray G for time scramble. Indeed. Her opponent down to 10 minutes as well. 
Come on, Andrea, H4. What else to do? Nice. You are 2400. Brilliant. Carolina's Classic, June 7 to 9. See you there. Excited <laughs> to hear everything on and off the board about my game. This is official, an official challenge for a match. Dare if you can. If you have balls, Alto this weekend. Tomorrow, actually. Cannot wait to see you there and show me how it's done. And it has to be filmed also. It has to be streamed. Yeah, no, I mean, this is too much. For a yes 2024, this is too much. You want a clock? <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, are, we have have are we gonna we have, have a winner? Are we gonna have a winner? have a message from Jules in the chat. What do you have to say to that? What is that? Let me see. It was pinned by the mod. Oh, I don't see. Sorry, I got distracted. Hi, why? Thanks for the voice message. I'm glad you liked my opening. Yeah. 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 I... I... You thought well. The only problem is like you didn't get the chance to to fight. But that's okay. I also feel intimidated when I when I face the bodas. I don't blame you, but I think the thing is the, the reason is the, the opening. I do think the reason is the I, I think I think the problem is Jules, unfortunately you haven't watched Alexandra play in this tournament on stream you haven't done in the recaps and stuff but have you did that have you used that in order to prepare you would have known that basically the key to win against alexandra is to get a classic normal opening and alexandra is gonna not develop her pieces herself but then the playing this opening you forced her to get an extra pawn you forced her to do everything right and when alexandra gets a good position well, this is too late. This is basically already too late for you. So the key is to, to not let Alexandra get an advantage out of the opening. Because then she will start looking for it. You just gave it all. Also, obviously, as we talked with Alex, great point for Alex and Alex both Alex Bonze and Alex Botas is that maybe these two will finally, I mean, Alexandra will believe in Benko now and will not be afraid of it. <laughs> what do you say, Alex? Am I right or am I right? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And I don't like that Quindy demo. That just gives your opponent so many active moves. It was all about getting the initiative in Andrea's game, but now that, okay, once you're already down in material, two rooks and a pawn for queen, saving that A to your pawn won't really make a difference. So H4 was critical to make the knight passive, but now her opponent has so many juicy moves. Like, for instance, what if I just go rook c1, yeah, and double up? That just looks over. Oh, boy. Alex is a great coach. If you want to prep me next time, feel free. Yeah. Pretty much the only opening I know, but you're right on that one. Well, show me the person who taught you to play 
Benko in the first place. See guys, that's why I'm against Benko, but the same reason I'm against King's Indian, but I'm not in the right place to start this rant about King's Indian, but rotten openings are not the, the right way to play and to, um, um, unless you were like 2400 and you're looking for ways to fight against a lower rated opponent. I mean, even like for Alex, if Alex was playing King's Indian against 1700s, she would get much better results than playing King's Indian against 2100s here. But Alex, meaning Alex Bonzea, with all due respect, by no means don't mean to downgrade or criticize your preparation, but claiming my opinions are my own and not the company. What do oh, you, say? you can have uh, you can have your opinion. <laughs> it's a free world, so that's why chess is beautiful. Everybody yeah. does whatever they feel like, and hopefully, we'll be able to prove the King's Indian is actually good yeah, in the upcoming maybe tournaments. Yeah, Sardinia. Yes. But yeah, uh, for me, Ben. We had the, we had the, we had the good chance. We had the good chance once in the. Uh, in the King's Indian with Alex against the Indian girl, but the prep, uh, <laughs> yeah, went from slightly better to losing in two moves. So <laughs> that did <didn't> help. <laughs> uh, but other than that, uh, yes, there are things to fix. Okay, bad news. Andrea's opponent played the best move. Uh-oh. 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 I think Andrea will probably play knight e3, but the problem is that... Uh... F5 would be a good move. Still, okay, let's just hope that knight e5, bishop e2, and her opponent doesn't see a way to make progress. It's actually not that bad at Andrea. He really needs to be precise with five minutes on the clock. This is actually not easy. Yeah. He needs to find this F5 move, which is easy, but... Also a bit risky, but what's annoying for me is that Andrea's opponent looks very relaxed. Doesn't Which is... seem to be very worried. Yeah. They are both on five minutes, so maybe, maybe we're gonna see something. Why is there a WFM below the board? Because Alexandra doesn't believe in women's titles. That's why. Oh, come on, chat. You cannot be that. You cannot be that. You're so lame, chat. You're so lame. But what wouldn't I do for you? What wouldn't I do for you? Yeah, it's it's a kind of a time scramble. We're probably gonna wait to see what happens in the next 10 moves. We're gonna see lots and lots of action. Yeah, and, um, well, Alex today was in a killer mode, played like a lion, like a beast. I think it's a new chapter for Alexander Botes. Finishing the game with 1 hour 40 on the clock. <laughs> that's, uh, well, maybe she was aiming for two hours, so not sure that's a victory. <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think, if you ask me, I think that what was going through Alexandra's mind today is that maybe everything is not so bad. Maybe I shouldn't regret everything. Maybe all my misery was just because I was playing against 
lions and wolves. But when I get to play opponents of my rage, life is so different. Life is so much better. So I think, I hope today for Alex was an eye-opening day that showed her Oh no, he played the Hope. best move. F5, damn it. Is it the best move? Oh, yes. sharks. Yeah, guys, the barrier. Our barrier that was stopping two pieces, knight and bishop, is about to get destroyed. The guy's playing the best strategy. This king is so safe, though. Yeah. Cannot really blame him. <laughs> he plays king h7, and how are you ever giving even a single check? You're not. That's just not gonna happen. Right. Okay, somebody correctly pointed out in the chat that uh, Andrea's opponent uh, defeated the Grandmaster this tournament, so yes, he's pretty underrated. Let's hope something happens in this mess. Because after h4, it turns out the only move to be better is knight takes on f3. If you go back with the knight, it's actually a mess. Come on, Andrea, have to play h4. Only chance. Only chance. h4, maybe he doesn't see the knight sack. Although point with the knight sack is that he's winning back the queen by force and that's winning winning but yeah it's still the best chance otherwise you're getting cooked okay andrea Almost down to her last minute. Three minutes remaining. She has to find H4 and put some pressure on her. Come opponent. on, Andrea, only move. We believe in you, girl. Come on. Okay, two minutes. We're reaching the peak of this game. Maybe some dramatic music, Dina. This game may be over in the next five minutes. Oh boy. Andrea has nothing to be upset of today. I think today is just the opponent was kind of like on strong big caliber and plus um i i think she did a great prep but then i think it was confusing i i actually like i'm not trying to flatter whatsoever i literally think that sometimes there is only so much you can do just like jules gambit today there was only so much she could do in a different way but I think it's nothing to be sad about. It's, yeah. That's one, I think. Okay, one minute left on the clock. Gotta make a move. Do something. Forty seconds left. Andrea, move. Come on, Andrea. 
Dreamwolf. Okay, it's actually she feels like this is everything is bad. That's why she's not moving anything. But H4 is not that clear. H4, okay. She's probably calculating the night sack though. Only move for black. He has to sacrifice on F3, otherwise it's not clear. She doesn't have airpods. She has earplugs. That's how they all focus. Okay, only move for black. If he doesn't find it, it's game on. Andrea is not even worse if he does not find the night sacrifice. But by the way, he's confidently drinking water. He probably saw it. Problem with knight takes on f3 is that it's not a real sacrifice. He's just winning back the queen by force. There's a bit of a complex sequence there, but... It actually wins the queen next. And she does it. Yeah. She does it. That's pretty bad news. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, good play by him. What accuracy is he on? I'm curious, Dina. I mean, man, he played pretty good. I guess I was lying. There is one thing I would like to tell Andrea after this. I was lying. One thing I would like to tell him, and I'm checking accuracy. Uh, at the same time, is that important lesson, chat, important lesson about when to go... Oh, not that high, actually, lower than Alexander today, only 89.7. I guess the biggest lesson is to know when queen is stronger than the rooks, and then rooks are stronger than queen. That's true, that was, uh, that was a pretty big mistake, but yeah, position was... Position was tough. And I said it many times. When you're in a difficult situation, it's harder, it's objectively harder to... Oh man, double exclamation mark. To come up with good defense. Because you're already in the, you know, this... Negative aura. 92 accuracy. Chad is trolling you, Alex. Wait, so what is this position? She, she's down exchange, right? So yeah, nothing to really talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Alex can join us to cheer us up. But yeah. there's nothing bad today. Just just this small thing, maybe. It's a good, like, lesson. And it was like, probably Andrea had her reasons why she didn't play here. Bishop d3 or bishop b3. Oh, it's... Anyways, the position was... Not really what we aimed for. Yeah, so. it's tricky because sometimes you... You say the best defense is to give away the pawn, sack the pawn. And sometimes you say the best defense is to keep it tight and hold to your pawns. And when to know when? Well, what can I say, chat? This is what defines a strong chess player. Is that he knows when do this strategy and when do that one. It's all about your like how you balance between these rules. I guess the biggest kind of thing when was this, like the subtitle subtitle mistake was bishop h4, but who would understand that bishop e3 is better? Well, probably and he found he found many good moves like uh, yeah. knight h5 and everything. He played pretty accurately despite uh, yeah being uh, out of the book. He found a lot of good moves. Basically, the only challenge that he faced in this game was the prep. But he yeah. did he did play good. He's a good player. I can almost say like I'm surprised he has 
not a lot of, like I, I he had the same number of ah, oh boy look at this he's three out of eight he's even i'm surprised he has so few points because he did play great he beat a grandmaster you said in the first round so yeah, yeah. well that was normal he's andrea, still gaining elo so, yeah, yeah andrea yesterday defeated a like a high player andrea with three and a half out of eight that was like that's a lot of points girl like some some people finish with three and a half out the, the tournament out of nine here, Andre's like three out of half out of eight with two more rounds to go. I think Anna Kram in her last tournament finished three, three and a half or something. And she said that she was quitting chess after that. <laughs> so, um, that's normal. Yeah. Unfortunately for Andrea, she cannot be faced. She's going to face, even tomorrow, she's going to face a high rated player. But once no, again, this is good. Yeah. This is good. That's why we came here. Uh, yeah. Tomorrow we will show you that the King's Indian is the best opening. You'll change your mind, maybe. You don't have to, but if she wins, who knows? <laughs> Alex could also play King's Indian tomorrow, by the way. <coughs> <clears throat> okay. Or maybe we'll do something else. Maybe we're just trying to confuse her opponent. Could also be that. Mm -hmm. Update the board. There is nothing to see on this board chat. Fine, I will. Yeah, board chess bots. You got me. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not the coach, so I shall close my mouth. I'm not the coach here. Wait. Somehow we got a position where we're down three pawns. Okay. We have bishop here, though. So they say bishop pair in an open position can be almost uh, giving you a pawn advantage, but we're down three pawns, not only one. That's the problem. I don't even see a dream scenario where we can get opposite colored bishops. Although... The problem is that we have a pawn that's also on h5, which is going to be a target in the opposite colored bishop endgame, so... Yeah... As much as I try to look for something... Don't think it's there. Although, can she just go bishop b8, a7 and recover one of the pawns? Oh, wow, look at her. She plays for domination, but knight h7, knight f6 coming. Why she didn't go bishop b8? Oh, maybe just a6 was the problem. Yeah. If we could teleport our king to e5, it's probably still lost, but that would... Make it somewhat more challenging. But yeah, the knight is escaping. Okay, the only chance would be to try and bring our king towards like c4, but then bishop d5 check is a problem. I wanted to say maybe bring the king to d4 and then go bishop b8, bishop a7, 
can try to infiltrate with our king, but it's too slow. There's just not enough time. Okay, on the bright side, Andre is two moves away from the time control, but... The brightest of all sides, Alex. Never seen yeah. a brighter side. Not even trying to be witty, chat. We have uh, GM Hammer in the chat. How did Alexandra do? She won a flawless Benko, now that you asked. She Very smashed he her opponent into pieces. She showed the complete domination on and off the board. Completely destroying her opponent, finishing the game with 1 hour 40 on the clock. Flawless game with no mistakes, Coach Hammer. You shall be proud of your students. That was a moment for Alexandra to take her opponent back to school and explain why we do not play rotten openings such as Benko Gambit and King's Indian. Wait, why did you have to throw King's Indian in the same place? <laughs> I feel like it's just something personal at this point. Uh, not personal, just... Uh, you know what? Seeing Alexandra finishing her development on move 12, castling, putting her pieces out, and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's just, I, I just never saw her developing her pieces in King's Indian. I never saw her finishing her development, getting out of the opening. That's why, but you may disagree. You may disagree. I cannot, I have to be true to myself. I have to. I cannot, I cannot accept all these lies and conspiracy theories and, uh... I see. So you haven't faced a good King's Indian player in a while. Fun fact, I literally lost my last round of my amazing tournament Prague Open against some Romanian international master, Romanian washed international master. <laughs> washed. Okay. I, I literally lost it in the King's Indian, against King's Indian. But that was also the first time I ever played D4, first time I played King's Indian. And I, I did a rookie mistake, which I knew. I shouldn't allow, and then I just blunder tactically. But I, I I analyze it, I learn my mistakes, and I cannot wait. I'm literally gonna make have a lesson with my coach today after this stream, and I cannot and because I'm starting the tournament tomorrow, so I cannot wait to get more Kings Indians this weekend. What do you think? Oh, you're Hammer? starting tournament tomorrow. Yeah. What tournament do you play? I'm starting a tournament. I'm playing so. Guys, first of all, tomorrow we have a last round, and it is earlier. It's much earlier. It's not just early. It's 9 freaking a.m. And you know what 9 freaking a.m. means? 9 a.m. for Andrea and Alexandra is not like a 10 a.m. for Alex Bonzea. Yeah, it's when they go to bed normally. <laughs> it's 3 a.m. my time. It's a 3 a.m. my time. So what I'm going to do today... I'm gonna finish the stream, finish the commentary, study King's Indian for white with my coach, and then go to bed. And then we're gonna play at 3 a.m. I'm gonna commentate for five hours, and then I'm gonna go back to bed. And same day, Friday evening, I'm gonna start my own tournament. But we won't be due for chess. Okay, but this can only be good for you. Yeah, I agree. No, no, I, I, I'm fake. I'm fake mad. I'm not mad. I'm actually excited. I mean, it's an honor and a privilege to be here at the Bodas Life with you, all of you people watching us, commentating for you, putting all this show for you, pretending I'm the the devil here, the 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 I'm the main guy here. But all I do here is share my passion for chess and root for my sisters because i want them to prove themselves wow. so wholesome yeah and i'm so proud of them both of them they do amazing they alex has had so much to overcome and she did and she's back on track with two wins in a row and today she showed that nothing can can 
break her literally nothing and Andrea's like I mean I don't even have to remind you how amazing Andrea has been doing this tournament no I see okay after that wholesome speech I'm not even gonna make the joke that I was about to make <laughs> I just remembered that we never mm. released you you actually didn't get the chance to get your second copy but looking at this game I mean, you might want to run for, like, it's not that you even need a second coffee looking at this game. It's gonna be over anyway. No, I'm, uh, I'm doing a push today. I'm trying to finish the stream without breaks. <laughs> wow. Everybody's chasing records. <laughs> How is our... Alexandra? Yeah. Alexandra almost got to finish her game with two hours on the clock. And, uh, yeah, all sorts of records happen here. <laughs> How uh, how is our posse, uh, Ivanchuk doing against our other posse, okay. Jules? Okay, so Musa. apparently, Ivanchuk is destroying our Jules Musard friend. Oh man, I don't oh, know no. how that happened, but oh no, Ivanchuk is uh, completely crushing. Mm -hmm. Really? Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. Okay, let me do something I'm not allowed to. Wait, are you gonna send him a voice message too? I could. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this is bad. This is. <gasps> this photo, bro! This is literally how I remember him. Okay, you guys don't know what I'm doing, do you? Mm. Okay, I'm gonna do something. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oop. Mm. Gonna do something. Bro. This photo, look at this photo. This is exactly how I remember him when he was 16 and was already like, a, everybody would say that he is like a future hope of French chess. Oh, really? Yeah. How young did he become a grandmaster? Uh, pretty young. I mean, I, I'm, I would, if I were to bed before 18, maybe 16 or something. He was a huge, I mean, he's still, he's a huge talent, but chat, in order to get big results in chess, just talent is not enough. You also need to work. You need to work hard. I just wanted to, um, in to entertain. Uh, so this is the position in Jules right now versus a bunch of two of our posses and um unfortunately jules is completely lost i'm curious why though what is on this board it's not chat don't get me wrong it's not like there is nothing that that we neglect andrea's game it's just andrea's like pretty much like alex against jules gamut for the last 20 moves Pretty plain. Yeah, that bishop on g6 is uh, oh, sadly I see. kind of out of the game. We need to put this here, right? We need to put this one here or here or here to complete the mission. Mm -hmm. Man, Ivanchuk took him back to school. Okay, let's see this quickly. Yes. Karokan, my favorite opening. Unbelievable. Advanced Karokan. Let's see what Jules has against it. C5 so fast. Ooh. Okay, so far, queen d2. Hmm. What's the problem with that? Man. Okay, guys, this is the most solid position ever. So let's see how Jules destroyed it. G4. Near one H5. Knight b3. Oh no, Ivanchuk. Oh my god, this is a humiliation. 
Alex, feel free to interrupt me if you see something interesting here. No, this is already entertaining enough. G5. Bishop takes c5, queen takes c5, knight a6. For now, it's okay. <gasps> queen b6 again? Bro! Are you saying that Ivanchuk, who is a grandmaster, 2611, playing against another grandmaster, who is a 26, in a completely equal endgame, schooled the young boy? You know there is this famous Russian saying, with youth to the endgame. Like, with kids, you take kids to the end game. You're gonna show them how it's done. Well, technically, Ivanchuk is twice his age, so... Yeah. So, Grandpa taught a young boy, young green boy, who is not yet ready. It's like a green banana on the tree. Oh, boy. Just a couple moves. Knight 3 is a mistake. And now there is uh I, I don't know why. Don't ask me why. This Grandmaster games, it's not when I feel strong. I only feel strong when I watch Botas. I don't feel strong mm -hmm. when I watch GMs. Oh boy. What is this? This move is like minus four. Wow. Wow. I bet he didn't see B4 coming and knight b5. Sacrificing your pawn in order to bring the knight. What a humiliation. That was, nice. that was a nice one, chat. Andrea would find it. Andrea would find it. That's the current position of the board. Yeah, he also got time control. Ivanchuk is probably going to convert that. How is the standing? Let me check the standings. Uh, is Ivanchuk running away with it if he wins? Man, Ivanchuk There's feels also a game here. between Donchenko and Baklan. No, so those are not our be... posses, so we cannot we cannot yeah, distract but if, Don, if Donchenko wins, he's also fighting for the tournament and he seems completely winning. Yeah, it's that moment when you watch this game and you don't understand much. But one thing I did understand. Damn. I, I, I can say it's a humiliation. That I can say. A grandmaster losing to a grandmaster in an equal endgame. Okay, it's not any grandmaster though. It's Ivanchuk, right. Ivanchuk was like world number two or world numbers. I don't know what. For a long time. World number... 10 for sure. And he's also a competitive <sighs> player in checkers. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard the story that Ivanchuk, when he, like, he has chess tournaments, he's studying checkers. And when he has checkered tournaments, he studies chess. You know, kind of like your... Uh, yeah, and apparently one on checkers can be more complex than chess. Which is surprising. No, 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 I no, no, that's impossible. Ha, ha, ha. He said it, not me. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, but what? it's like the, the difficult part in checkers is that you need to see 10 moves in advance to calculate those forcing captures. So, like in chess, you only need to see like two, three moves normally, while in checkers, uh, calculation is uh, much. Yeah, in, in chess, you kind Longer. of, it's a lot of intuition, right? Pattern recognition, right? Yeah, so it's in, intuition, simple decision-making, and tactics. While in checkers, you need to see, I don't know, calculate deeply. Draughts, yeah, draughts, guys. Well... What is the difference? Um, I, It's like every, you know... It's like, it's like a bigger board, or what's the difference? The difference? Well, they're different. Than the oh, draughts. Yeah, the, because there's 100 squares version. Yeah, oh, I think that's yeah. those are Russian, Russian checkers or something like that. But mm -hmm. uh, every version chess kid knows how to play checkers because it's like basics. Your chess coaches always teach you how to, like, for fun, they always make you play 
check. Oh, really? Also, you know these corners. Corners bring one part to from to another, from one corner to another. These are basics. Mm -hmm. I see. Shashki, yes, that's correct. Okay, so for the last round, I'm just checking the standings. It's not very likely that they will face each other. Oh, wow. I'm just noticing that for this round, so many players have uh, <laughs> have decided to leave the tournament. It's actually quite funny. Oh, really? So Andrea's opponent from yesterday, after losing to her, he just decided, okay, I lost against Andrea. I had enough. I gotta throw in the towel. No more chess for me. <laughs> okay. Man, Andrea destroyed poor poor grandpa. Humiliated <laughs> him. He he quit. She played she played a good game. No need to be upset, but it's actually his friend from Austria also is not playing. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> uh... oh. There are players on three and a half, but actually maybe there is 20% chance that the girls are facing each other. It's not completely crazy to think that. That would be, I mean, that would be a dream come true. That would be amaze me. Do you think they'd make a draw? No, I think now that Andrea is ahead of Alex every single tournament, I'm actually rooting for Justice. I'm rooting for Alexandra. I think Alexandra would destroy Andrea. Although, Andrea has learned a lot and Alexandra is kind of like... It all depends how much Alexandra came back from all those losses mentally. But yesterday was a big, was a big gift. Big the big, relief. Yeah. The biggest robbery in the history of Fermentera happened yesterday for those who missed. Alexander Prado also <laughs> has three and a half. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd love to see more streamers against streamers. No, Andrea has earplugs. <laughs> Andrea has a, she always has earplugs. So does Alexandra and so does Jules. It, it and so does Kitty. I think it helps them focus. It's an interesting thing. I don't never we never see anyone high level ever saw. I never saw any competitive <laughs> player wearing earplugs i guess there's a question of a habit i think for those who play yeah. chess less often they get easier distracted they need that for focus but pro players never do that they they just they once they get into the zone basically like a second they look at the board they get into the zone they start calculating they don't need any earplugs mm -hmm. sorry yeah, alex you were saying yeah, great no i was just saying looking who's the best streamer in this tournament uh anna maya seems to be winning by Quite uh, a margin. How many points does she have? She's on four and a half. And also... What about Katie? She lost, yeah. Yeah, she lost to Serik by which uh, Alexandra had uh, missed the winning position again. So, okay, if I check Alexandra's opponents, I'm pretty sure most of them are doing well. So let's do that check together. So Alexandra's opponent from the first round... Is winning 30 elo points. Oh boy. Uh, opponent from second round. Okay. Losing uh, a little bit. 10 points so far. Her opponent from third round. Okay. She's having really rough tournament. She's losing 35. So. I think she amongst all. She has the worst tournament. Serik Bai played well. Dark John. I think bad tournament, but he's break even. Uh, Tarji, bad tournament. Okay. Actually, oh, and about, uh, yeah, the uh, Fide Master, she got Blumenfelded by. Um, he's also losing rating. It was kind of like a 50 50, honestly. She faced a few underrated guys and a few. Normal opponents. Uh, that means that few of her opponents were really, really strong and she has nothing to blame. 
herself for and yeah some points probably she could have called it but okay but okay we don't regret anything the tournament hasn't finished we should draw conclusions once the tournament is done there is still a game tomorrow we're gonna focus on playing that one good All right chat yes yes we do how's the game going a4 why is it minus nine Oh, there's a fork in the position. Uh oh. Oops. Oh, crap. Oh boy, Andrea smiled. We saw the mark. We saw the mark. She's gonna resign. Damn. I sent it. Damn. I didn't jinx it. Quick resignation, no more. He's trying to talk to her. She doesn't want to talk to him. She doesn't want to talk to him. She has a story, but I'm not sure she's going to talk, tell it. I think she wore this hat for a reason. Andrea resigns, ladies and gentlemen, in a completely lost position after losing a fork. The game was pretty tough. He played well. He wants to analyze. She doesn't want to analyze. Say no. All he's trying is to, you know what. But she's on stream. She says maybe after. He's disappointed. But, bro, when I get your chance, you should have offered the draw. Now that you... Took a point out of her. You better run away. Even the arbiter knows that. The arbiter looks at him and is like, that kid is so naive. Bro, sign your score sheet at the very least. Now the, what, look at what you've done. Look at what you've done. You shall regret this decision. And no sad music today. There is no, there is no need. Andrea did a great prep. She improved. And then she did some yeah. subtle mistakes. They were tough. The only lesson... But her opponent played great overall. Yeah, her he opponent like did play great. Yeah, the only sub like lesson from this game, the biggest lesson is like to know when the rooks are stronger and when pawns are stronger. But that being said... Yeah, that being said... It's a good fighting game. I have no complaints. Why is Dina being rude? Up. Oh. There we go. Captain Andrea left us. Oh, sorry. Captain Andrea. I'm not being rude. I'm being... The guy... The guy thought he had a chance. But no. What do you say, chat? Are we gonna see? I think it's time for Alex to. It's time for Alex. Captain Andrea is still our captain. It's time for Alex to cheer us up. Where are yes. you, Alex? Cheer us up. Join us. I mean, you mean Alex, me or Alex the winner? Mm, Alex the winner. Yes, we need Alex the winner though. Captain Andrea Share did her a little best. bit of her wisdom. How was she so flawless today? Yeah. What can we say? I think overall it's a good day for the Bodas family. I think chat overall it's a great day. Alex finally stood up for the family as a bigger sister. This is what as she's supposed to. And Andrea has nothing to blame for. I think Andrea is going to be sad to see Posse Jules losing to a Posse Ivanchuk. I think that's actually going to ma make her s more sad than what happened in her game. Uh, yeah. Yes, this, unfortunately, this, it is what it is. What do, you, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I'm not upset about this game. It's just, uh, as you said... It was unnecessary to allow the queen sack, but other than that, it was just unlucky opening. So, yeah, we tried the surprise line. Opponent spent thirty minutes and found figured it out. Best reaction, and uh, 
after that, he also played very accurately. So, yeah, not much to do sometimes. But, yeah, yesterday she uh, taught her opponent a lesson. Now she learned. That's chess in a nutshell, according to Bobby Fischer, isn't it? Chess in a nutshell, that's the expression. Never heard of this, but yeah. it's a good one. No? Yeah. It's a good one. Uh, okay. I'm expecting them to join the call, but no sign. No sign them. of life on the they other sign. side. We shall yes. not lose hope. We shall look at our at our other bodies how they are doing. See what's going here. And still decent chance they play each other tomorrow, so <laughs> that would be pretty That funny. would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah, imagine imagine they get paired against each other. That would be amaze me. Alright. Where are our winners? Okay, Ivanchuk, really calculating everything till the end, it seems. We see the humiliation oh. here right now with if Basili, Basil, Basil, Basili versus Julian, Julius, Julius versus Julius, how they say Julius. <laughs> What yes. Caesar? Julius Caesar. Yeah, I just I'm trying to, but I just cannot compete with the uh, game commentary. He's too good. <laughs> 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 I don't want to interrupt such. Yeah. Master class. What do you say? Okay, Andre is in the Discord chat. Okay, Andrea will do DJ stream. Mm, Andrea is actually thinking she did something wrong, but um, uh, but no, I I think nothing. I think. I think the game was good, Andrea. I think uh, you did all fine. Yeah. Just perhaps not... Not... How did Alex do? Bro, she, she finished three hours earlier than you. You don't know? Wait, bro, you literally... When you left the room... When you left the room... You literally were passing by. Didn't you see the king on e4? Oh, wait a second. Alex doesn't know that when you win, you put the king on e4? <laughs> no, I, what is maybe this? Maybe Andrea doesn't. <laughs> yeah, oh, Andrea doesn't know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so apparently we have uh, no call. Yeah, okay. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Our champion... Left we us. have no news from Alex, so maybe she's just uh, celebrating. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Okay, chatters. Right. Tomorrow is a new day, so we got Last one win. Found tomorrow. Well, I didn't think I would say this, but... I'm not gonna miss you because I'm actually seeing you in 14 hours. <laughs> in exactly 14 hours, chat. Okay, gonna maybe they're again. gonna play each other and it's gonna be a quick game, Dina. You can no. hope for that. 14 hours. Yeah, uh, well, what can I say? As a coach, I'll do my best for the last round. If they're not facing each other, then <laughs> if they do, 
<laughs> if they the face each other, it's gonna be a dream for you. It's gonna be a dream for you because you won't need to prepare anyone. <laughs> okay, you said it, not me. <laughs> Oh, of course, of course. My coach would never prepare <laughs> us when his students would be facing each other. So, yeah, you will be... Also, I think... Yeah, no, anyway, guys. Um, I think it's time for us to depart. Because we... Yeah, we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid. Uh, and we're gonna meet again in four... 15 hours for the last round which is earlier 12 a.m pacific get your coffee if you are in american coast get your coffee supplies ready because we're gonna have a very long night together we're gonna have a very long night yeah hopefully ending the tournament uh on a positive note Today overall was a positive day, so hoping for at least a point tomorrow. At least, yeah. at the very least, we're gonna do fine. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all watching. This has been me, Women's Grandmaster Dina Balinkaya. Dana, Women's Grandmaster Dana Balinkaya. A southern girl from Charlotte, North Carolina, and an international master, Alexander Panzia from the land of give promise. Me, give me a state. Give me a state. What state would I be? Ooh, what, what's be... that? What's that state? What's like state? Michigan or something from Michigan. Oh, from Michigan. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot yet fake a New York accent, but I'm soon I'm gonna put you in New York. Yes. <laughs> right, chat. Thanks for watching. I I'm gonna yeah. improve on accent. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Yeah, it was good. <laughs>